Welcome to Bronze to GM, everybody. Today, we are going to be plugging our opening into the macro transition. So, we're going to sub out our fourth and fifth barracks for third CC, second engineering bay, and armory. And it's still going to be the same build. We're still going to look to be aggressive where possible. We're going to see, though, in some games, if we can add some drops or liberator harassment um, in a very minimal APM way still, just trying to do more things uh, and be a bit more active. And we're still trying to push very hard, but it's going to be more of three base rather than two base. And... I am kind of thinking, do we add more production? I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it to a very kind of 60 worker cap max. So we're going from 45 to 60 workers. Doesn't sound like that much more, but you're mining out, right? Too many Terrans build 70, 80 workers and never make use of it. It's a waste of time. Now, I do want to have a little think about extra production, right? That's the one thing I haven't really planned out here. Extra production on three base. So you guys let me know. What, what, what would you guys like to see? Would you like to see more barracks or more factory? I don't care what you guys want. I'm going to tell you guys what, what will win you games. And we all know what that is. It's going to be factories. So what we're going to do is basically third base gases plus two more factories. Now this is going to be a very extreme example of extra production, but that idea the idea is we can actually pump three tanks at a time with our bio and create a very good army and having one sort of siege unit solves all your problems as Terran whether it be lots of range libs or lots of factories it solves absolutely everything so let's get into it guys let's play a game all right guys welcome back to bronze to GM we're here in gold three and we are going to start learning how to plug our exact same opening, all of our fundamentals, into a different build. So, let's start off and remind ourselves of the basics. Select that uh, build SCVs, add to our control group, and rally that first SCV over to the ramp. Okay, we've got our natural, our third, our fourth, and our fifth. And we are going to, of course, build that depot. And then queue it there where it's got to build the barracks, set the rally point back. And third, fourth, fifth and rally point aka production there so we're just going to build more SCVs. is this a barcode in gold yeah and they said good luck have fun bro which means they've probably sniped me so i forgot on my first game guys um that we've probably got someone who who, who is trying to play against me that's fine so we're gonna build a barracks and a gas and of course what do we do after the barracks and gas guys there are barcodes everywhere guys it doesn't mean it's a smurf it just just expect weirdness <laughs> We grab our scout, hide it behind the expansion. So we're following the exact same things, but what is gonna be the big difference here that we're doing? And, and you know, you could absolutely follow, by the way, in case anyone's like, oh, so should I do this in Gold League? I get bored of showing you guys the same thing over and over again. You could take what I taught you up to this point all the way to Platinum League easily, for sure. Um, even beyond Platinum League, if you just keep getting better at executing. The reason why we're gonna try and show you how to plug the same opening into a macro transition is to show how a lot of Terran build orders are very they're like they're modulated you know it's like um it's like the space station or something right you can you can take one part of it and you can just plug it into a completely different part and it fits in many different formations so Terran's kind of like that it's kind of like Lego or it's these different blocks that you can you can kind of put together in different ways it's it's very modular um so you can take something and 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 People are like, oh, that's an all-in build. And they think if they want to learn a macro build, they need to like completely relearn every basic step. And it's not like that. If you think that way, Terran is a lot more daunting than it needs to be, okay? But if you realize that, wait a second, everything kind of plugs into, into the same sort of things. And, and I can just actually not be as stressed out because I know that the same cheesy opening I learned, I can actually transition into a macro thing off that as long as you're not building all your buildings on their side of the map you're going to be fine so let's focus on the build a little bit more guys let's remember our basics now that we've given you that preface two barracks queue back to mining and remember what do we do next guys a second gas so we'll grab him we don't quite have the money there we go okay so remember control click the barracks add to our barracks key put the rally point there on top of the ramp now our opponent could jump in there or there. So a cool little thing would be um, is if we put a little depot there to block that path. That would be nice. But we don't need a depot yet. So we don't want to go off our build order. We're going to shift click those two and then go in there. Drop another, another mule. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
keep building marines. All right, guys. Um, so what are we missing? Well, remember, about 35 supply, we want to get that factory. So let's try and actually do that right on time. Because remember, we were getting to a point where we are hitting our bio timing much crisper. And that hasn't changed. We're still, our first attack is going to be identical. The one with the first two medevacs, stim, shields, lots of bio. That will not change for us, okay? Mule, build some SCVs. And we're past 35 supply, so it's factory time, okay? So we're bringing an SCV over. The moment we have 150, there we go. We select it, add it to our control group. And why is he not going anywhere? Because he's going to build a starport here and he's going to build a reactor and swap over. Okay, stim plus shields, lots of marines. We could build some marauders if we want, but technically marauders aren't the best unit versus Terran guys. Um, so we don't want to build too many. We can mix a few in. A few marauders is totally fine, right? We, we've in general said marauders are a bit more friendly, so not a bad idea to, to mix in a few. Oh no, what did we forget, guys? <gasps> Gary and Bruce, best friends forever. That's, well, Gary's just going to build there. Bruce is going to build that one here to block off the jumpy point. And then they're both going to meet up, up here, actually, okay? Gary and Bruce, and they're going to build more depots there, okay? So we're telling them to do that. Let's build a starport and that reactor. Now we can select the starport, add it to the factory key. And we can do a supply drop to help us get out of this terrible supply drop. <laughs> marines, marines, marines. Okay, cool. Let's box our army, add that to our army key just so we can defend. Gary and Bruce will keep building those depots. This is the first game in a couple weeks I've done the build as we had a big break for Pigsty Festival. So first game's a little bit sloppy for me getting into this bronze to GM mode again. Um, what have we forgotten, guys? About 65 supply at the latest. We want to get the engineering bay so we can start getting upgrades, right? Okay, and let's try to focus a little bit more on the macro cycles. We want to start building tanks. Okay. Okay, so build SCVs. We don't have any energy for mules. Build marines, build marines. Build medevacs. Notice I don't have any money, right? <laughs> so we're very broke right now. Oh my god. Okay, let's go over here. Stim attack move. Okay. Now notice these guys are kind of stuck behind each other, but that's okay. Looks like we managed to kill one thing. Now we're going to cancel that marine. Why? Because we want to rebuild that tech lab. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to next, we're going to look at our building and say, wait a second. This is the point where we look at our money, right? We've got stim and shields. Let's make concussive. What do we do? This is where the build changes. This is where normally we go fourth and fifth barracks instead. Oh, okay. Let's just grab our whole army. He's attacking us. We'll talk about what we do next in a moment. Okay, so what you're going to do in this scenario is you're going to pull some boys as well, okay? If you're ever under siege like this in TVT, pull some boys to take the first line. And then stim a move. Oh, he's in our base as well, yeah. So we're going to go up in the main now. As I said, we're probably playing someone who's watching the stream, guys. So that's okay. It's good to lose some games. It allows you guys to get more games um, in the lower leagues. So what do you do as that macro transition? Remember, it's going to be third CC. Second engineering bay, armory. Okay. And what do we do after that? We grab the SCVs, queue them back to mining. So these guys are now here. Those guys are down here at the front. And we're building more marines, more marauders. But SCVs are the priority. Because we've taken economic damage, it's more important than ever for us to keep up SCV production, okay? Now, here's an advanced trick. If you have SCVs in your army, guys, grab your army, right click on the minerals, control shift, left click, and then remake your army group. Now that was just one SCV, so I didn't really need to do it there, but it's just a good tip in case you guys ever find yourselves uh, in a bit of a uh, bother. Now let's do add to control group, add to control group. So we have an engineering bay hotkey, build a few more SCVs, a few more mules. Now who knows, maybe my opponent doesn't have the greatest economy. We'll see. Let's send some scouts out, guys. So remember, dumping key, dumping key, dumping key. So we just sent one to the middle, some to the watchtowers. And all we're doing, building SCVs, building mills, building marauders, marines, tank, medevacs. And we're going to move out there a little bit. And then we'd love to make upgrades, but we don't have any gas. So we're going to put some guys on gas. We're going to pull back because he's there. So we're going to grab these guys. What do we do? 
Take him steel. Okay, so we're just gonna kill this tank. Opponent's gonna attack us, so grab all the SCVs there. Kill his tank. <clears throat> And we're going to A move back up into our main base. He's already out of there. He's going to get out. So we're going to grab a bunch of those SCVs, send them back. Take the gases. Grab these guys. Shift click, deselect. You guys remember the shift click, deselect there. So I think we're realizing he's going to keep dropping. So you don't want to do this by default, but if your opponent shows, they want to keep dropping, right? If your opponent keeps doing the same move over and over again, you'd be kind of silly to expect different things to happen, right? <laughs> so we'll build some turrets so he can't do that anymore. And now we want to steal. So remember, we're dumping these guys and we're sending them all out, okay? And what is the point in us dumping like that? Well, it's just we want to scout his expansion. So we're trying to put as many guys out as possible. Put him out in the middle as well, okay? So we've now got two one upgrades going, so we can actually show you guys the macro transition. We're gonna restart Gary building depots. We can float our third down here. Of course, we're just main base saturated, natural, almost saturated, and then we'll rally to the third when we get there, okay? And look, we see he's got a full third, but doesn't have a fourth. So do we feel like we're dead here? No, not at all. Now, at this point, it's easy to jump ahead and think about all of the extra things you wanna do, right? but we haven't finished our two base production. We're only on three barracks, a factory and a starport. So let's rally everything to the third first of all, drop some mules, build SCVs, build Marines, build tank, build medevac, okay? I'm gonna put that rally point down here. We see that he's taking that, ignore that, ignore it for now. So what do we want? We want two more barracks. Let's get Gary nonstop building depots. We'll get Bruce over there as well to help him out. We can get vehicle weapon upgrades because we're building tanks, right? So now we get to a point where the game gets kind of interesting because we're going up to a third base, right? And as we get this third, suddenly we're going to have a lot more money. So what is our three base production? A lot of people will just add a lot of barracks here. But what I find works better for most players, especially until you're maybe masters or above, is just take two gases on the third base. And at the same time, we're going to take two factories. Now, what is the idea here? We are going to up our tank production massively because tanks are a game changing unit. Speaking of which, he's coming forward, so let's try and siege these tanks. Now we're gonna stim, A move. Now he sieged his tanks, so we're gonna pull back for now. No worries. So we're just gonna pull back. So we've got these factories, add to the control group. Gary and Bruce keep building. These guys add to our barracks key, add the reactors. This guy's mega tryharding right now. So this is where we can do a really advanced, a bunch of really advanced strats, but let's not. Let's fix our macro. So we'll put two on each gas, okay? Tell Gary and Bruce to keep building. We're gonna add two more tech labs. And what are we building? Marines, tanks, medevacs, okay? Now, could we break that? Look at his army, look at my army. My army is much bigger, but this tank's blocking me. So that's the main problem right now. So if we can get a big enough spread, this is how you break tanks, okay guys? This is how your opponent could break your tank line as well. And then you just stim and A move, okay? Now we can see he's pushing the right side. So it's very important once we clear this, start a step forward. That we run over that right side. And all we're building, tanks, medevacs, and so on. Now guys, we're at 62 SCVs. That's as many as we'll ever need. So he's once again trying to siege us. So once again, we can just spread because we've got way more stuff and then stim A move, okay? And if you can, if you want, you can do really advanced forward spreading like this, but that's pretty advanced stuff, okay? So what we did there is we're basically winning through the power of macro. Go home, make plus three, make plus two, make plus two weapons. Our last two depots that we'll ever need, right? 
We're gonna replace that gas. And because we're very busy at this point in the game, we're gonna do inefficient things that allow us to stop thinking about macro. So we're just gonna queue up four or five more SCVs to replace these ones, take the gas. We'll take a fourth base as well. And then we don't need to think about our macro for a while, right? All we need to do is go hold down the Marine key, hold down the tank key, hold down the medevac key, add these guys to our army, and we can go for a push. So we can, look at this, we can go, okay, you go there and our army will push the left side of the map. Now our opponent's also building liberators, which is super awesome for them. Notice I'm queuing turrets everywhere. So we're just saying, okay, that's fine. We just put turrets everywhere. No worries. And we're gonna push the left side of the map while this guy should be able to deny that base, okay? <clears throat> so what are we doing? Macro-wise, remember, no mules anymore. Why aren't we dropping mules, guys? Very simple reason, because Remember, once we start attacking, and we can pull most of these guys all over to the fourth. So your fourth base, your fifth base, it's just for transferring workers, okay? And there's a Liberator here as well. Where'd that Liberator go? So we'll go. So he's gonna try and base trade me, guys. Or is he? No, he's coming back. So if you're ever in this situation, it's a good idea to be very aggressive. We're just going to siege our tank, stim and A move. Our opponent has fantastic macro. Really impressive for Gold League. Now, because there's a tank like that, if you move right next to it, notice the tank cannot shoot you when you're inside its minimum range. So we're going to leave and come back here, okay? Now, why are we going back? It's because I don't have anything that shoots up with my army. So you see, he's got liberators. It's very scary. So we're going to regroup, break those rocks, and then we can go again, okay? So we can make a planetary there. If you want, you can make a command center on your fifth. And remember, those are just to transfer workers to. Check upgrades, plus three armor, plus three attack. Transfer workers over to the fourth base. Okay. This guy's trying to siege his liberators on us, which is very cute. All we're doing is queuing marines, queuing tanks. We'll scan, try and get a sense for where his army is. And now, obviously, at this point, we could... Uh, Oh, he's actually coming to me. Okay, I was like, oh, he's going to be siege, so maybe we'll have to go jump into his main base or siege up the ledge or something like that because from the, the low ground ledge, it's a very good angle. But uh, yeah, this game was a little messy here. Our opponent did some non-stop multi-prong on us, which is interesting. <laughs> I don't know if legit gold league or not, but uh, they had 160, uh, 138 APM. Their macro seemed pretty all right and stuff. I don't know, maybe they're legit gold. Their macro plus, so normally in gold league, you would not expect someone to be able to micro like that with like multi-prong and picking up and leaving with drops and also be macroing as well. Maybe they did, I don't know. I'm impressed, I'm very impressed. Um, so you can see my opponent killed a ton of SCVs on the first attack while I was explaining something and we were like, oh shit. But who knows? Maybe they are actually... It took them a very long time to recover from there. Uh, whereas you can see... Uh, it took me a long time, sorry, to recover. Whereas they went on up. But yeah. Yeah, it took them a while to get their third base saturated. Um, <laughs> it's insane though. <laughs> I'm just like trying to remember all the little details that I'm explaining and doing it as I'm going. And I'm like, ah! So basically, yeah, it's, it's hard for me to talk and adapt when someone's multi-dropping like that like attacking the natural and the main repeatedly i'm like what the fuck two pronged attacks constantly I'm like, this is insane so really well played by my opponent made it made it a little awkward for me where i was trying to just remember the commentary we're going to count that as a warm-up game but let's just kind of review really quickly what was the main thing the main thing is instead of getting fourth and fifth barracks we're going to go third command center second engineering bay armory and you always take your gases just after that anyway so let's write that down um, sub out the 4th and 5th ranks for 3rd CC, 2nd eBay, Armory, 3rd and 4th gas drops after this. Same uh, in the other version, 3rd and 4th gas drops after the extra racks. 
so similar. Oh, okay, guys, we're going straight into the next one. All right, guys, so we're going to try and hit this next build order. Um, as I said, okay, we've got the build order down. I think we can remember the build without looking at it, but let's try and remind ourselves of, okay, the transition. And if we can squeeze some harassment in while gearing up for the push, that would be amazing. Um, I think definitely Gold League, not too early to be embracing the power of the Liberator, right? Ah, uh, we're playing as... Ah! And uh, good to see Gold... Gold League almost instant search times. Just setting up some camera locations there, guys, and let's talk you through all the basics. Okay, so this is our main base. We're building more SCVs. We've got our natural, our third, our fourth, and our fifth camera locations all set up, and our rally point, which is, of course, as always, over our production. Now, if you guys want to be super hardcore, it's never too early to start doubling up your workers. This is something we'll talk about a bit more in Diamond League, um, because once you're that high, if you're not doubling your workers, how dare ye? But essentially, you want to make sure two of your workers are on the close patches. See what I did there? All I did, I just grabbed an SCV off one of these far ones and just clicked it there. Uh, very simple. Um, I guess we attack that drone just because he will probably attack our guy. We can bring another drilly boy to help. Put two guys on gas. Now here's another advanced thing. We grab that guy, that SCV, tell him to mine from the inside. Super advanced. Bring this guy back. Now, this guy needs to go across to scout anyway, remember? So we didn't actually have to change anything there. It's just, we're not actually chasing him. We're just setting that up. So we chased off the drone. And now we're saying you queue around and then check for the expansion. Super normal scouting pattern. This guy goes to build the command center and orbital and reactor on 19 supply. That's why we paused SCVs there. Make sure that guy's there. Okay, fantastic. All right. So now we can take our natural. Now, why do we do this patrol path? There's no reason at all. If you fucking waste your time doing that and you don't have 300 APM, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Stop blindly copying pro gamers, guys. Um, well, he just killed me SCV. This tryhard. Well, he's got a hatchery. That's all we needed to know anyway. So tryhard uh, detected. Uh, I guess that's what happens. I must have accidentally queued my SCV through the mineral line, guys. That's why normally we say SCV here, 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 here. Like, you do like a sort of diamond around the minerals so that you're not running through and getting yourself killed. Oh, look at that, guys. If you ever see an Overlord, click your Marines on the far side of it, the rally, so they'll shoot it and it'll automatically run south deeper into our base, okay? So, see? I didn't even need to micro them. I can add them to my hotkey, of course, build some up. But look at that. So now he reacts, but it already ran deeper in my base. How good's that? Control click the barracks, add to the barracks key, set the rally point on top of the ramp, lower the other depot. That's a great start for me, guys. That is so good for me. Let's get that second gas. We want to start building up that gas bank, of course, build some more SCVs, build a few more Marines. If you want, you can go hunting just a little bit. See if there's another overlord wandering into our territory, maybe. I doubt there is, but you never know. Um, let's get two guys on the other gas. Orbital. You can go there. That SCV could have already been queued on the minerals. That was lazy that I didn't do that ahead of time. Right? Okay, guys. Check this out. So these guys are going back to gas, which will make it 16 workers. So we can rally to the natural. We can go to tech labs. And we're getting close to that point where we can start doing proper macro cycles, right? Once we've got this orbital done. For now, we're just building marines. We're chilling. We still don't really know what our opponent's up to by any means. We don't need to. We're just playing blind, guys. So mules, SCVs, SCVs, Marines, Marines. And we're past 35 supply, so it's time for that factory. So let's get the factory. And then we can go stim and shields in a moment. Stim, shields. I'm just tapping it, or I can even hold the button down. And the moment I get the money, it'll spend. And then it's time for another macro cycle. So I don't have much money. So you can see this early on, the macro cycle is kind of us just like tapping the, the keys. So as soon as we get the minerals, we can build it. Gary! Chat's calling me out! I forgot Gary and Bruce! Remember, right after you start that depot, you're meant to start building a depot with Gary, and then you don't get supply block. But instead, because we forgot, we have to go Gary and Bruce at the same time. Big mistake, guys. Big mistake. And so we're supply blocked. Jeez, what is wrong with me? Gary and Bruce will already queue up another depot as well. <laughs> it's good. This is simulating real gold play, guys. What can I say? Um, you will never, you, you never stop getting, getting supply blocked at that time, to be fair. <laughs> you always find a new thing to get distracted by. <laughs> so we're going to build one more depot. 
And after that, we'll queue up into the main. All right, guys, we need one engineering bay, right? So we can get some upgrades. Okay, we're building marines. We're building SCVs. Sorry, should be SCVs first, right? Should we raise the wall, guys? Why not? Let's put all of our marines down here. And we can add some marauders in there. Some more marines. Some more. Queue a few extra SCVs. Now, we do want to make sure we get into, like, the proper mode, right? So what do I mean by the proper mode? I mean, like... Gary and Bruce need to start building depots, right? In the main every cycle. So let's reset here and go SCV as SCVs, drop mules. Marines, Marines, Marines. Build medevacs. Make sure all our rally points are here at the front of the base. They are. And then Gary and Bruce. Non-stop depot builders. Awesome. So when those medevacs come out, we're going to go for our first stim attack, right, guys? So that's step one. But remember, what do we do after that? So as that attack's moving out, we should be getting fourth and fifth barracks. No! Remember, we're doing we're doing the macro follow-up this time. What did we just see out there? Just some Zerglings, okay. <laughs> some more SCVs, some more mules, more Marines, tank, Matavac. And we're gonna move out. Okay, so what we wanna do, guys, we wanna move out. I don't know how he got in here. Let's dump him, raise that. Okay, guys, so these guys are gonna move across to a staging point, okay? So we're gonna move over, attack from maybe, Maybe the middle. We'll attack from the middle. Behind this, let's go. So we're going to box some guys. We're going to go third C uh, second engineering bay and armory and a third CC. Okay. And then what do we do after that? Double gas. Okay. So we're still moving over to our staging point. What are we going to build? Concussive. Uh, more marines. Tank. Medevac. More SCVs and mules as well. Drop mules. Oh, I shouldn't have dropped mules, should I? Because now I don't have a scan. So we're going to creep blind. Okay, this is going to be fun, guys. I think we've got just enough energy. Okay, let's go. Oh, some queens in the open. That's always nice. What have we got? So we're just A moving. Let's move in to get the drones. Because there could be a bunch of banelings about to come down. And it looks like this attack might kill our opponent. So we're going to kill that hatchery. We're just going to A move these and go back to macro, okay? Two guys on gas. Two guys on gas. Let's get the upgrades. Get more depots, which we forgot to build. Marines, tanks, medevacs. Let's, oh, we don't have a supply drop. Let's do a supply drop there. And remember, we still need to get our fourth and fifth barracks, okay? And you, you might think at the last game and go, well, what about the factory? What about the extra gas? Let's not worry about that for now. Now, I've purposely A moved these units so that we get to see the next step here, okay? Our opponent literally had no fighting units at all and apparently didn't see us moving out um, despite that. So at this point, what are we going to do, guys? Look, let's grab workers, rally everything to the third, lift that, and keep queuing up SCVs. We're at 54, so we need six more SCVs. Oh, how are they still alive? Oh, this poor soul. My opponent is getting ruined. Um, we're going to get plus two attack, plus one vehicle weapons, more marines and marauders, more tanks, more medevacs. Now notice, guys, if we box our army, but there's SCVs there, what do we do? Control, shift, left click. All SCVs removed. We make that our army. Fake marines coming in. Imposters! You, you just need to right click. You don't need to A click to get rid of changelings. A lot of people don't know that. And we'll go out here and we can siege up our tanks defensively. We can make an orbital. We can build just a couple more SCVs. We don't need too many. Now this is a point where, remember, let's do our three base production. Okay? Actually, wait, wait. First of all, a few more. Let's go two more reactors. Or actually, what do we normally do? We normally do tech lab reactor, don't we? So lots of marines, tank, medevac, spend that money, and build depots. Okay, now we're in between production cycles. So double gas, and remember, we also want to build two factories, but we need 200 gas to build these factories. So we're just going to grab these two SCVs, wait for the 200 gas, and then do that. Cue them back. So this is going to give us a lot more marine production. Okay, guys? Which is really nice. Let's put guys on gas. Put guys on gas. Now you might be like, wait, wait, wait. You're already at 64 SCVs. Why are you building more? Okay, 62. You're not even saturated. Why wouldn't you build more? Because this is always... Look, our main's mining out. So we can grab eight workers from our main. Or nine. You want to drop your main down to eight workers left. Okay? Because these two patches are about to mine out. And we just lost some workers. So let's queue up four more workers there. <laughs> nice bailing attack from our opponent. <laughs> Uh, let's queue up plus two attack. Okay, guys. So SCVs, Marines. We've queued up all the SCVs. We need tanks, medevacs, and depots. Okay. Gary and Bruce, super busy. Let's make sure they just keep building. Okay. Two more tech labs. Now, at this stage of the game, 
we are a little bit complacent. So what's a way you can stay active if you feel like you're not keeping enough information or in your opponent's face? Well, something you can do is this one where you box about eight Marines in a medevac and you like put those on a different key and you're like, okay, go take a watchtower. And we can do the same thing here. We're like, okay, uh, dump this one and we're gonna just tell that to go unload in a mineral line. And you can be like, oh, oh, what do these guys run into? But the thing is you don't wanna distract yourself too much here. Um, and, and miss macro too hard while you're doing this, right? You still want to go get plus three weapon. Lots of Marines, lots of tanks, lots of medevacs. And at this point, we want to queue up a billion Marines. Look how much minerals I have. And if you are going to this stage, obviously, let's get a fourth command center. Why not? But also, if you end up floating lots of minerals at this stage, number one, queue up more Marines. Number two, we can build three more barracks, okay? And add reactors on those if we need, okay? But for now, let's grab our army. And let's get a push going. Why? Because we've got so many tanks. The question is, where do you push? So I'm scanning to figure out where my opponent's third base is. It's there. So we want to push probably about here, right? So let's push. Or we could just push along the front. We'll just push along this left watchtower. Now, this drop on the side, not even going to micro this. If you do, you're like, oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll just drop it on a watchtower. But the whole point is this drop. It's not meant to be something we're putting a lot of APM into. It's there to distract our opponent. And until you get to a point in the game where you're playing people who are really good, you might be like, well, I don't want to throw away eight Marines. It's actually more worth it to distract your opponent for 20, 30 seconds and throw those Marines away than it is to obsess over like, oh no, you know, I got to micro it. You're better off continuing to macro while doing that and you'll be totally fine. Now, guys, we're on creep. So what do we do? We set up a push, same way we always do. Now, how do we do it? Remember, guys? We want to grab the back two tanks, unsiege, shift, siege. Grab that tank, move it there, shift, siege. And we want to just never select our army as one big key, okay? Now, you can keep doing that methodically, or you can every now and then as well, we can grab our army, and we can grab these guys and add them to our key. They're coming forward. Grab our front tank, our back tank, move it forward. Grab our tank, move it forward. And we're just going to keep moving forward little sections of guys. And you can always like stim a few guys in. If you really, if you feel like you're already kind of close enough to them to be super annoying, this is what you can do. You can kind of grab a medevac and some bio and you can be like, okay. And what you do is you're trying to just run in. And if they jump on you, that's fine. Because you can already fly the medevac over the top. And you're like, oh no, he's coming for me. And you just bring these guys back and you're baiting him into your tanks. So you see what we just did there? That doesn't take a lot of micro. That's actually very easy to pull off, right? Now, while we're doing this, hold down the Marine key. And if he attacks us, we're going to just stim, okay? Now, because there's very few Banelings, I think we can just win the game. And indeed, we can. So it's totally fine. But let's continue. Let's imagine we're still playing. So what are some things we could do? Once you set up a push like that, one thing you can do, right? If you guys are just set up, you can just kind of leave them there. And they're all on one hotkey, right? Now, the important thing to do is every now and then you do need to go home and macro. If you haven't built all your depots, you build some more depots. If you haven't built all your upgrades, you build some more upgrades, right? What's more important? Planetary on the fourth. Building a fifth base can be really nice. Building some reactors and adding these barracks to our control group is really nice. If we're not maxed or anytime we trade units, just hold down the marine key, hold down the tank key. You can see that we build a kind of crazy number of tanks with three factories. It's an insane amount of production. But what's really nice about having lots of tanks or range libs is it allows you to always have the range advantage in any situation. So it affords you the option of just saying, as we get a little bit of funny graphics here, what is going on? <laughs> um, it does afford you this interesting opportunity to just kind of say, hey, wait a second, I can just siege me tanks on the edges and, and siege them up in a spread, spread my shit out and you need to come to me. And all you need to do, stim your stuff forward a few units at a time and do some cool stuff, right? And they have to fight into you. So this is how we set up a big push. Now, this is still dangerous, what we're doing here and teaching you guys, because too many of you are going to try and do this and you're going to take too long to set this push up because you're too obsessed with, with other random shit you're doing. Now, why is that really bad? Remember a couple of golden rules to force yourself to still be hitting an aggressive timing that actually is going to use your army at the right times. How do we do that? How do we use our army at the right time? Number one, don't go past 60 SCVs. I keep going to 62, 63. If your third mineral line's a little unsaturated, that's totally fine. Remember, you're gonna have 
workers to transfer to your bases from your main and then your natural. Your main always half mines out about 8 minutes 30 to 9 minutes. Your natural always half mines out about 11.30 to 12 minutes. So you're going to have plenty of work. 60 is more than you need, okay? A lot of you are going to go, I have 5,000 minerals. The most important thing right now is for me to go, oh, I need to build command centers. And you're going to start doing this because you're afraid of fighting. Get over your fucking fear of losing a fight. Is, is the first. Stop. Do, do, don't do what we just did. There's the dumbest. If you're going to build command centers, you got to do it this way, first of all. You know, build like bloody 10 of them at once, you know, if you want to make them all into orbitals. Um, if we get away with building them on location, that's going to pay off until at a much higher league. And even in a much higher league, if we're attacking, we often get away with it. 4GG. And a bunch of top tip Terran, uh, top tier Terrans will, will try to do that. So that, that's good. But even then, we're still focusing on the wrong thing. But I've got money. Money is bad. Money is bad. Everyone says, just spend your money. I'm not spending my money. I'm not spending my money. I'm not spending my money. And this is why everything you've been told about StarCraft, while it's very good on the basic level of understanding how to get out of Bronze League, it often gets people stuck in silver or gold or plat or diamond even sometimes, where they're just staring at their money and they're obsessing over these minute details. If you're maxed out or you're pushing hard or you're microing a push correctly, it doesn't matter because I've seen so many people who spend their money at a grandmaster level. And do you know what happens, guys? Do you know what happens with all of those players? Every single one. Every single one of those players has the exact same issue. And we're just going to alt F4 out and restart the game really quickly to get that going. Their fights are beyond dog shit. And this is a crime which affects Terran players more than any other race. Because people are playing Bio, which is a very, very much... It's a, a Terran in general is a glass cannon race. Unless you're playing Thor Hellbat. Which is why Vibe, very wisely, taught Thor Hellbat in his, in his hey, let's make an A-move army, right? Because that's one of the very few A-move armies. It's one of the very few A-move armies out there, right? Is, is, is Thor Hellbat. But outside of Thor Hellbat... <laughs> unless you're playing that very specific and I would say rather fucking boring style it takes a long time to build up it's all about how your long ranged low hit point very weak units but very high damage long range right it's it's it, you're not fucking space orcs who want to go into melee right you're not you're not hand to hand beast beast warriors who are just fucking rah, we could tank and shit roaches can do that zealots and archons to some extent can do that you can't do that with bio units so it doesn't matter how well you macro, if you, at the end of all of it, just keep throwing your army away in terrible fights, you can end up so cost inefficient. So the big thing which has, I think, affected so many and, and, and honestly far too many um, players in, in Terran is amazing macro and just unfortunately such bad um, engagements that it undoes all their macro. And I see players up 50, 60 supply, um, you know, all the time. And, uh, and then they end up just throwing it away because they just take bad fight after bad fight. So I really think there's something to be said for shifting our focus back and forth. Am I focusing on micro? Am I focusing on macro? Queue up a bunch of extra macro and tunnel vision on our micro for a few minutes. And if you're floating money, good. If you're ignoring your macro and forgetting to morph your fourth into a planetary, good. You can do that when you're done focusing on the fight. Good luck, have fun, IMP. Good luck, have fun. Thank you so much, everyone, slapping your bacon. Awesome. So we've only got part one up so far. Part two should be up soon, and this will be part three, guys. Um, all right, so we're going to build a depot to start. Okay, so you go there. And remember, guys, what did we say? Let's control group our SCVs. So there we go. So that's going to be SCV number two, and uh, our SCV scout will be number one when it goes out there as well. So we've got uh, probably third base there, fourth base there, fifth base over there. We go barracks, and we can take a gas. One, two, three, four. Yep. One, two, three, four. Do we want to take this fifth? What are we playing, guys? They said they're Protoss. What's the bet they're lying? I wonder. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, we're going to put two guys on gas there. And let's see what happens. All right. Uh, 
Uh, I forgot to send my SCV scout across the map. Sorry, guys. The um, the visual glitching is like super triggering for me right now. Do you think we can maybe fix this? Uh, I'll, I'll do it after this game. After this game. Okay. So we've got a probe coming in here. We'll attack it. We'll bring another SCV down in case we need it. Looks like we probably don't though. That's fine. Okay, so orbital reactor. We're gonna make this command center, add to our control group, double tap it, center the camera location, set the rally point. And we're gonna bring another SCV down to fight it and then bring another one to build our depot. Keep doing our build. Yeah, I had this glitching the other week and I can't remember how I fixed it. I think I just turned my computer off and on again and it was fine, so. I'm not sure. I think it's a Windows thing when I leave my computer on overnight, maybe. I'll, uh, remind me to fix it at the end of this game, please, guys. No! Oh! Oh, phew. Um, so guys, check it out. What did we see? Our opponent's expanded. That's all I needed to see, right? That's all I needed to see here. And what do we need now? Two barracks. Okay, so two barracks on the way. Cue them back. And let's just focus on the build. Focus on the build, okay? Lower the depot. At control click. Add to control group. Those guys have already been rallied back. Two more marines. Build another SCV. And let's build that second gas nice and early ahead of time. And the reason we take this second gas a bit earlier than we need with this build is it just lines up nicely so that we can um, we can kind of rally our workers uh, down to the natural all at once. We'll put this guy on gas a little early. We rally there. We make an orbital. We drop mule. Keep building marines. And our marines can fight that. If you want to be super pro, you always start a step towards an adept. Oh, look at this tryhard. Two tech labs go down. Okay. Did we put guys on gas? So 16 on minerals, three on each gas. The rally points down. Build a few more SCVs. Build some more marines. And what's next, guys? We're going to get it this time. What are we going to do? Factory. I think there's a lot of people out there who think everyone's a smurf though, just because they do a bit of micro, guys. Remember, we're gonna look at it and this player is probably gonna be messing up everything else they do. Yeah. <laughs> Stim shields, more marines, more SCVs. Gary is working away. And because we did Gary so early, we're good. Mules, more SCVs, more marines, and queue up another depot with Gary. Now, we could already add Bruce to help him out if we really want, but mm, yeah, let's just do it. We'll, we'll add, add Bruce down there to help Gary straight away. Why not? Now, let's get a starport. Get the reactor. Build a few more CVs, a few more Marines. I'm going to drop a meal there. Now, as we get higher, like, I'm really hoping we die to just DT some games, right? Because a lot of people are like, well, what if someone gets a Banshee base? What if someone gets a DT in your base? And it's like, well... I mean, we do have scan, right? Will we have scan, though, if we're really good at dropping our mules? No, we might die. It's fine. That's why we're going to have to get better at scouting. And we're going to have to do it soonish, right? Because we're getting into gold league. As we get higher in gold, we should be starting to scout a lot more. So we're going to have to, like, figure out some, some methods of scouting, uh, whether that be dropping a scan or building a safety turret every game. You know, there's a lot of different things it could be, but we'll find out. More SCVs, more mules, more marines... More medevacs. We build a tech lab on the factory. We can get plus one weapons started. So if you keep dying to DTs, you'd be like, okay, we're just going to build a turret in the natural. So if DTs walk in, all right, we'll be ready for it. You know, that sort of thing. But we don't want to do this too early. Gary and Bruce start building depots in the main. The reason is, as always, guys, if we start reacting to things before they happen, there's a thousand things that can happen in a StarCraft game. So a lot of people, when they look for a build order, um, and I get this in, in comments on my YouTube videos and everything. They're always like, well, okay, we'll cancel that one. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, let's stim and a move. This is totally fine. Okay. Did we get our upgrades were finished? So it was okay. Keep Gary and Bruce going. Now, the important thing is we need to get a command center, right? So the question is, where can we fit that? Up there, I guess? I don't think we can fit it there. Oh, we could have. That would have been even safer. Add to control group. Second engineering bay, armory. 
More depots, more marines, more gases. Okay, guys, we've done our transition. And this time, oh, we're gonna stim. Grab these guys, box. I'm not gonna micro that at all. Just stim a move. This is costing him a lot. Okay, so we can scan him. And remember, our medevacs are out. We wanted to go for a push anyway. We delayed it a little bit just to defend and kind of catch up on our macro. We've had to like rebuild some things. I can get an SCV, say repair that, repair that, go back to mining. But all I'm doing right now is saying, okay, you guys are going to go for an attack. So they're going to go through the middle of the map. While they're doing that, let's fix our macro. So we're going to go, okay, you two build, take that. I'm going to put two guys on gas straight away. Our bases are saturated. So let's rally to the third, even before it's finished. Queue up more SCVs. Queue up more Marines, Marauders, tanks. Queue up all of this stuff. Get Gary and Bruce to keep building. We're trying to do as many things as possible. It's not about super efficiency. It's about just getting shit done ahead of time. Now let's do a scan. He's got a Colossus. And we're going to try and stim and A move. And we'll see what we can do here. He doesn't know how to battery overcharge, which is always nice. And stim runs out. So we press stim again. Always look for that little orange lightning bolt. That tells you when your stims run out. And it looks like with battery overcharge, he will survive. But uh, so let's just run home. Okay. Stim, run away. All right, let's lift off that base, build some more SCVs, build some more Marines and Marauders, tanks, medevacs. Now, what is next in our build, guys? We never finished our two base production, so we built two more barracks. Now, we don't need depots, right? So Gary and Bruce, it's the very rare time where we are 80 supply ahead. So we're just going to make upgrades. And let's grab these guys. And these guys that are coming home, put them all on the army key. And let's put some scouts out. So we can put one there. One down there. I don't know if my opponent even has a third or not. We probably should have checked that and attacked there instead of the angle that I attacked. But we traded with our opponent's army, so it's totally fine. Thanks for waiting. Three, two, one. Game resumed. Okay, guys, so we're going to build up some more SCVs. Um, Marines, Marauders. Let's scan his army just to get an idea. So it's some Zealots, some Stalkers. Click on them. Check the upgrades. No upgrades. Do the Colossus have range? The Colossus do have range, though. I don't have a lot of production right now, guys. Which is kind of... One more tech lab, one more reactor. Where's his army? He's coming here. This is kind of scary. So I want to siege this tank. We're going to try and run these SCVs away. Stim. A move the SCVs. Siege that other tank. And... We're gonna lift the command center. I don't know if you guys saw, but he was actually clicking on the command center. This better be good. So our opponent here are going for some Chad moves. We're gonna build some more uh, Marines and Marauders here. We're gonna build some more vehicle upgrades. And remember, we can transfer some workers down. And he does have a third base, okay. Very nice. So what do we do next? Oh, pull back. Whenever you don't see a fight coming, always pull back, guys. So anyway, two more factories, two more gases, lots of marines and marauders, guys. Just keep scanning him. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to actually move a tank forward a bit, because I feel like he's able to poke in a little bit too much. And we're going to spread these units, because he's got splash damage. So the more angles we come from, the more our units are actually like naturally spread out. And we can also do this, we can put a medevac far forward. Grab these guys, add to the army group. Ready for dust off. I have a giant army, guys. So we want to bring our army up. This better be good. Gateway. Coming. Upgrade complete. So I had the feeling there. Let's lift that command center. No, there we go. Land it. Two guys back on the gas. So our opponent's doing some super annoying shit here. Where he won't leave. Build two more tech labs. Okay, so what are we going to do here to make this look? How, how can we solve this without APM? Because right now I want to just go out there and kill him. We're just going to keep our unit spread. We're going to move this tank forward a little bit as well. We're just going to keep our bio spread, keep building units. Make 3-2. Gary and Bruce back to work. We've got the gases up. So what do we do? Just keep building tanks, bio. Okay. Tanks, bio. Tanks, bio. And we can even build a fourth command center if we really want. But what else can we do? Well, he's all over here, so 
Let's do some of this stuff, shall we? Let's just grab some bio. Okay, we're gonna take those two. We're gonna put them on a different hotkey. We're gonna send them around the edge and they're gonna try and do a little drop in the corner. Okay, and now we want everything else on our key. Is he left? Okay, it looks like he's left, but we just saw as well. He's got a warp prism there, right? So let's try and move over there. We can grab some marines. Control click, stim. Grab these guys, go there. Don't leave me hanging. Mineral Stim. field depleted. Ready for pickup. Mineral field depleted. So we're going to clean up these zealots and we're going to move across to a big bush. I'm going to stim these guys and just try and fight. Kill some stalkers. Kill the base. And I think we just let these guys trade, kill whatever they can. Because this is going to pull his army out of position, which should allow my army to push forward, right? Building tanks, building tanks. So let's build a fourth command center. Put these guys back. Tanks, tanks, tanks. Bio, bio, bio. My army is moving forward. I got a giant army, right? His army is down in the bottom, right? So if you can do that double drop, that's what we call a distraction squad, guys. If your opponent's ever being a massive dickhead to you, you always want to use a distraction squad wherever possible. And the idea of a distraction squad is it means they have to come to you now we're trying to scan to see if he's recalling he's not so we're just kind of moving in and killing everything and we're preparing for a bit of a base trade does he think he's winning Which one's the desperation? Man? My opponent played really well. Thank you, Memori. GG, well played. I'm not sure what... Was it... I think it was... Was it running past him? Or maybe he was doing the desperation move. Cool. Anyways, um, that's a game. Uh, let's... Yeah. So there was a pretty big upgrade difference, of course. Uh, end of that game. I don't know what the upgrade difference was. It looks like my opponent's plus one was... Yeah, yeah. So my opponent was basically. So I, I think my, my opponent's big mistake here, guys, was a big um, was very common, right? And it's I'm gonna go stand outside your base, but not really commit to an attack. I'm kind of committing to an attack. Actually, my opponent had ten gates. My opponent had great production. Just had very few workers, and then these attacks didn't quite kill me. My opponent was pretty all in with their attacks, and they actually should have killed most people. They just didn't quite kill me, so I managed to defend and we, we were kind of okay, right? Now, in hindsight, it would have been nice if I'd scouted a bit before my first push, right? If I just sent some marines around just to check for where the third base was. Because I think when I pushed, that third base was probably up, right? My opponent did some really good plays. Ten Gate, Zealot, Colossus? Like, that's a scary timing, guys. And even did some blink harass? Like, this was some pretty cool shit. I'm really impressed, so well played, well played, Memori. But, um, and the observer saw pretty much everything I did. But yeah, yeah, as I push out, it looks like my opponent's probably, yeah, building a third. So it would have been cool if I killed that third base. I think the third base, because this is not like an all-in push with tons of tanks. If it was an all-in, I'd say push the natural, because you want to get up in the guts and try to take him down. Because this is just basically a bio medevac push, I just happen to have one tank with it. It's just a bunch of bio units. We're just seeing what we can kill, right? And notice we're just kind of eyeballing it and going, yeah, he doesn't have that much stuff. I got a good number of stuff. Let's stim and move. That's something you guys are going to make a lot of worse decisions than me with, right? You guys are going to take bad fights. And that's part of learning and improving. So I think a lot of people sometimes, they make the mistake of watching a guide like what I'm doing right now. And they're kind of like, oh, we got promoted. And they're like, what you're doing should basically make me win every game otherwise it's not valid right and that's kind of not the whole point the whole point is we're trying to show you how to develop your skills right little bit by little bit which is what starcraft is it's like you're, you're developing your skills just little bit by little bit and you're slowly evolving them over time you're slowly just adding all these different little pieces there and um and becoming a better player just little bit by little bit right you're, you're adding those little chunks those little pieces together and you're slowly trying to evolve that and and, and learn right and 
losing is actually probably more valuable than winning. And that's the mindset we always want to be looking for. And that's my one hatred of this format and what I'm doing because I'm st I'm winning basically every game. And people watching are like, well, I should win every game. And it's like, no, 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 no. One of these league tiers for me takes me like an hour, right? It takes me almost no time to get through. For you guys, it should be a slog. It should take dozens of games. And the longer you stay there, the better because the more chances you guys have to actually get experiences. Oh, this beat me. Let's look back at that fight. Why the heck did I run in there? You know, like, <laughs> why Why did I run into that scenario, right? Why did I do that? Um, it, it, it's, it's really useful to actually get those reps and get that experience. So, so yeah. Um, oh, thank you so much um, for the message, Sim Lovey. I just read the message, by the way, from earlier. Thank you, dude. I really appreciate My that man. kind of message. Um, thank you, everybody, for the love. We've got Beanmeister, RJNFC, Viking Plague, Sim Lovey, MTA World. Thank you so much. Trevor with the Prime Gaming, welcome. Uh, and XIV3, because I can't count in Roman numerals. We say XIV. Welcome, XIV. Uh, welcome back for your third year running. Thank you very much, guys. Um, it always looks like there's like no... It, it, it's a weird little visual glitch. I don't think it changes anything. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I'll... Um, I could restart my PC. It just means I might need to restart the stream. We'll give it a go. We'll see how it works, guys. If I have to restart the stream after this, we'll do it. Just because it is a bit distracting, I think, the visual glitching. Okay? So we'll do that next time. All right, guys. So we've got a barracks there. A gas over here. And what are we doing, guys? It's a Terran versus Zerg. Now, remember, everything's kind of the same for a bit longer for us, right? We don't really care. Remember, we're doing this diamond around the minerals so we'll go do 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 so we don't go through the mineral line yeah um and that can be number one that can be number two so remember that we don't really care too much about our opponent's race it's just interesting to know just so we're not you know surprised as we get better uh we'll have a lot more adjustments and adaptations and completely different build variations but versus each race um for now it's one size fits all the only difference is terran we don't build a wall protoss or zerg we will build a wall okay with our depots once we start doing that um, on our natural, that is. So remember, we pause at 19 supply. We go orbital, reactor, and then we build our command center next. We've already seen a hatchery. And it looks like our opponent's going three hatchery before. Pool. No, they're not going. But our opponent's going hatch, gotcha. pool, hatch. So we saw a drone out there. So that means our opponent's playing very greedy. Now, this is not something we're going to react to, but it's just they're skipping gas and playing all minerals for now. So if we were doing something aggressive, like Hellions or this or that, we could probably just run in there and roast all their drones. Yeah. On the other hand, we don't need to worry about anything aggressive from our opponent. So when your opponent skips gas completely, plays a very greedy build, there's two ways you can respond. You can either be exceptionally greedy yourself or exceptionally all in. And doing either of those is a massive trap until you are at least Platinum League. Okay, we're still in Gold League. We're not going to change our build. Because the thing that suffers the most, and this is something even pros do this, where sometimes they're like, oh, this would be a good reaction. But if you don't have any experience with that reaction, you're going to execute it worst, and you're not going to know what to look for. You're not going to know how to adapt your build. And it's actually not going to end up that good, right? So let's stay focused on the build. We've taken the two gases. Let's take the gas. Okay? We've got the Marines here. We're still rallied on top of our ramp. We don't need a bunker 100%. We tell this guy to go on gas and this guy can go on gas and then we can rally everything to the natural now why 14 out of 16 that's not full but remember we've got barracks scvs that are mine going back so always remember that mule build more scvs build some more marines keep boxing these and shift toing them keep building the scvs awesome guys so really nice macro so far we're just kind of queuing that up and once this orbital's done is when our first real macro cycles of course can begin we can go two tech Base labs. Is under attack. That's a lot of Zergling. So guys, what do we do here? We're going to go back and just box everything and click it up in your main middle line, okay? Command center upgrade. Complete. And what we do is we want to get our Marines in there, and then we want to aim move everything, okay? And what you can do, super advanced micro, grab the front SCVs, press hold position. Notice how the Zerglings aren't attacking right now. So that's a very advanced maneuver we just did, where we created a wall. Shield wall. We call it the drill wall. Very useful in Viking times and uh you know battle of normandy all that sort of shit also very useful with your drills so use your scvs to fight but if you are if you've got a lot of them that are getting attacked at once grab those ones and just tell them hold on a second you guys 
chill the fuck out. <laughs> no, I, I said my opponent couldn't be aggressive. My opponent just said, well, I can. It's literally the worst aggression in the game, slow Zergling, though, because it's got no ability. But if you haven't dealt with that before, you might be surprised, you might be a bit slow. But anytime Zerglings are flooding in, guys, always pull back to a choke point. These guys are solid on the ramp, I think, so he shouldn't be able to get surface area, so we should be okay. So we're just going to keep building Marines, keep building SCVs, and Gary and Bruce can start the depots on the natural. So we're going to go depot, and then obviously we might need to pull back from here. So let's try and do this. Let's try and wall off, shall we, guys, at this point? If we can wall off, that's going to stop this in its tracks. Because our opponent is... If they keep doing the same thing and you don't react to it, that is uh, obviously not smart. <laughs> okay, so you've just dealt with a chaotic all-in from your opponent, right? He made it look like the greediest build of all time, but it was actually the most all-in build. We used an engineering bay just because that's the cheapest, uh, tankiest structure in the game as Terran. So it's always something you do where you just use that to wall off, okay? So Gary up here is going to keep building depots, but what are we missing? Factory. Okay, so build Marauders, build Marines, okay? Uh, we can make plus one weapons because we're behind on everything. And it looks like I'm having just a little bit of an internet drop here, so apologies for that, guys. And we are back. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to keep building SCVs, mules, Marines. We've got Stim and Shields finished. Oh, Shields didn't finish, but Stim is finished. We'll make Concussive. Keep building depots with Gary in the main. Now, what do you do from here? Well, we're following a normal build, but our starport's really delayed. So, in between queuing up Marines and Marauders, we're naturally going to start to float money at some point. And when we do, we can start our transition ahead of time. Now, we could also do things like, well, we don't need to wait for medevacs. We could just go with com combat shields and concussive and go across the map because we've already got a big army, right? And we killed a lot of his army. So, counterattacking when we've got so much units, not a bad idea. But for now, let's follow the build. Okay? Command center goes down. So we're doing that that transition, right? And what do we do after the command center, guys? We go second engineering bay and armory. So we go second engineering bay, armory. We can put those there. Actually, I'll put the armory there just to make sure these SCVs don't get surrounded. And we're still just going to wait for the medevacs. Take two gases, build a few more SCVs. Gary definitely going to need a hand over there. So Bruce is going to join in. Swap the starport and the reactor around. complete. Okay, guys. SCVs, build some more. More Marauders, Marines. Let's put guys on gas ahead of time. So notice I grab two, right click on the gas, press return cargo. And then we want to go two medevacs. We can add our engineering bays to our control group. We can start plus one armor. More Marines, more Marauders. And as soon as those medevacs are out, we'll go for a, a nice big bio push. Same as always. Lower the depots if your SCVs are getting stuck. Okay. And remember, guys, I'm going to rely on everyone who's watching live to keep Complete. asking inquisitive questions and generally telling me why I haven't explained some really fundamental stuff. And be like, boy, you didn't explain this. Noobs won't know that. What the hell, dude? I'm relying on you guys. You guys are all teacher's assistants today if you're watching this live. So please shout out some... That's a Hydralisk, guys. I was about to go out for an attack because the medevacs are here. So we're going to move across this map. We're going to raise that depot. Tank, Spyro, got an orbital there. So let's grab all the excess workers, about five. And what we can do is we can rally them all, but if you use that guy, we've just told him to stop landing. So you've got to grab him, tell him to land again, if you do a lazy thing like that. Okay, so we're building SCVs, building tanks, building medevacs. Gary and Bruce, gonna queue up some more depots. We can drop some orbitals. Oh, we shouldn't have dropped all those, right? We should be saving scans for the aggression. It's a really bad habit that we've got to break. We've got to break that, guys. What is a 1-1-1? One, one, one? That's where you go one factory, one starport. Uh, one barracks, one factory, one starport. Okay, guys, so we're going to move in here. Move right up in on the drones. Now we're going to try and bring these guys over from the right side because they weren't fighting. The other guys were all fighting. Now, because Hydra's have a bit longer range than Marines, we move on top of them. And it looks like we should be able to just win the game there. GG, well played. If you see unupgraded Hydra's, what's your immediate response in terms of macro as Terran? Uh, nothing. You just do whatever whatever you were planning to. Hydra's are a normal unit, and you should be doing a normal composition yourself. So, 
Um, arguably, if you're talking pro level, you might build more tanks against a Hy Hydra Bane, but you still, if they're heavier, heavy Ling Bane, you want more Widow Mines. So you can uh, you can play Widow Mines or good. tanks, but if they go Lurkers, you absolutely need tanks. Now, the thing is, too many people get caught, oh, what do I respond to this? What do I respond to that? The, the whole point here is like, with what we're teaching today, you wouldn't respond at all, right? You would not respond at all, okay? Because your standard composition is a standard composition. Standard compositions are good. Are Marines good against Hydras? Upgrade. They're, yeah, they're fine. They're not especially good against them. They're not especially bad against them, right, guys? They're both just solid units. Marines are technically a bit more valuable, but, you know, Marines are kind of weaker to Banelings and things and all that sort of stuff. Let's let's keep answering these questions. So, technically, tanks are really good because they outrange Hydras and Banes. So, that means the Hydras kind of have to come to you. So, you can do a bit more of, like, setting up a concave with your bio and your tanks and that sort of stuff. But it depends a little bit. Yeah. Is it worth adding Hellbats in it or are they just not worth it? If you're playing, there are some very solid Hellbat styles out there. Hellbats are a very good tanky unit, but they're very mineral heavy. Um, and they don't offer you any siege. So Hellbats excel at killing Zerglings. Um, they're not amazing at doing anything else. They tank okay, but they're also very weak to Banelings. So unless you spread them out really well, Banelings clear them really quickly. So... Um, so that's actually, actually a thing. So if you, if I was to play a Hellbat, sometimes I will play like a bio Hellbat style. For fun. It's not really optimal at pro, but I can make it work at GM really well because people aren't used to dealing with it. So they don't know the counter. They don't know they need to make extra Banelings to just instantly kill the Hellbats. Because if they let the Hellbats live for very long, the Hellbats roast all the Zerglings really quickly. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of an odd scenario, but it can work really well. Yeah. When do I add Marauders when playing Hydraling against Hydraling Bane to Lurkers? What is the balance between Tech Labs and Reactors? What 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 league are you, Lemon Tree? What's the balance between Tech Labs and Reactors on Reacts later in the game? Later on, you tend to only add Tech Labs if you're a pro gamer because you only want Ghosts and Marauders. Um, but if you're a lower level player or a mid level player, it really depends what you're trying to do, right? So the standard way of doing it at higher levels, and this is not what we're teaching in this Bronze to GM. So be warned, guys. We are teaching things not the way pros do it. And that is correct. That is correct. When do you add Marauders? Well, the standard thing is against Protoss, you go three Tech Labs, two Reactors. And normally against Zerg and Terran, and this is pro level, guys. So this is pro level trivia. This is different to what we're teaching in this show. Um, so versus Zerg and Protoss, it's one Tech Lab, four Marauders, four Reactors. And for all matchups after that, when you go to eight Barracks, which is usually the maximum number of Barracks you ever get to, you get three more barracks with tech labs. So you end up with eight barracks, four tech labs, and four reactors. But you start out with most on, or unless it's PVT, in which case it's two reactors and six tech labs, mostly marauders, ghosts, a little bit of marine production peppered in there. But uh, it's half half in against Zerg and, uh, and Terran. The reason why we don't go as marine heavy is Protoss has a lot of splash damage, um, ranged splash damage, Archons, Colossus, Storm, Disruptors. So even though Disruptors do great versus Marauders as well, Marines just find they're a little bit too weak. So as Bullia says, like we, the thing is we might actually want some reactors on our extra barracks with the style we're doing here, especially because we're going so tank heavy that we've already got tanks to kind of gun down like Colossus and Lurkers and all that stuff. We're going to need more Marines to guard the tanks because what are tanks weak against, guys? Tanks are weak against Zerglings and Zealots. Things that can, number one, close the distance very quickly, but also um, light units that don't take bonus damage from them is, is definitely an issue. All right, guys, into the next game. Let's go, 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 go. So you do, so we might add, if we go above uh, our last three barracks, we probably had like two reactors, one tech lab, I think would be a good mix, something like that. So then we have, yeah, four, four tech labs, four reactors. I think we'd end up, would be a nice mix is what we'll do. The audio for June was almost as bad as Tenet in theaters. No, how to walk, really? Oh, that's so sad. Tenet was terrible. There's no way it could, no, I think you must be exaggerating, surely. The audio for Tenet was ridiculous. It was so hard to hear the dialogue, man. I, I kind of enjoyed Tenet, but it was kind of silly. All right, guys, so we've got a TBT here. Okay, so this is SCV number two. Oh, right. Okay. Camera hotkey two, three, four, five. Ah, you know me. what, guys? That's going to be four and that's going to be five. Now, why do I expand this way against Terran? What's going on? Very simple reason. Barracks, gas. 
I like to always expand in front of my base against Terran because Doom Drops are very scary. So this way, by having my army out front here, defending my third and my fourth, I'm also defending my main from Doom Drops. And I only need to worry about Doom Drops in the back of my natural on my, my left flank. So that, to me, makes me much happier. <laughs> because Doom Drops are very scary. So we can put two more guys on gas. Make sure this guy can go down there. Gotcha. Grab some minerals, then go build the command center. Okay, so we're going to try and get this macro transition going more. Now, one really cool thing we could do is if our build's very tight, I would like to squeeze some liberators out in this game for harassment after our first bio attack. So we've got guys, orbital and reactor on 19. And it looks like our opponent has walled off because our SCV is bugging out like crazy. So he walled off at the very start of the game. <laughs> Very early on for my SCV to have What's gone. Going on? Like, I definitely clicked that at his base. All right, we're going to go orb, uh, command center and then Move depot. It. Go yeah. there, set the rally points. Go oh, command center did he? Upgrade. Oh, Complete. no. Okay. Yep. I'm just going to hide. Okay. SCVs, mules. Add on. Complete. All right. So what are we doing, guys? We're building marines. Rallying them to the top of our ramp. We'll lower this depot when it's done. We're building SCVs. Waiting for 300 minerals so we can build those next two barracks. Okay. Let's build another SCV. Build another two marines. All chill. And this guy, of course, his job is to see when the expansion happens. All right. So he's hidden behind the natural. We haven't seen one yet. We don't quite have 300 minerals. There we go. And <laughs> just waiting for it. I'm like, let me click. <laughs> let me click this. Extra SCV. Extra marine. Now, this guy's not in vision, so let's just move him forward a little bit. We want to be able to just see the edge of that area. Like, I'm going. There we go. So now we'll definitely see when a command center comes down, okay? So let's get that second gas. Keep putting our CVs. Orbital. Remember, these guys are queued back to minerals, so we absolutely can pull two workers off gas, uh, off minerals onto gas right now. And we can rally down here. Keep building marines. Awesome. So this seems like a pretty clean build so far, but our opponent has not expanded, so if that's the case soon, we will add a uh, bunker on the natural. For now, double tech lab, SCVs, mules, and still no, still no expansion, so let's build that bunker. Okay. Cue him back to mining. And we are at 38 supply, guys. So you know what? Because we have to build the bunker, I'm going to let my factory get delayed just a little bit. We're going to build the depot. First. So Bruce is there. And then Bruce can build the rest of the depots in the back. Remember, we don't wall off. Now we start the factory. Stim and shields is on the way. Make sure these guys are all in a control group. <laughs> Let's try and scout. Because I'm like, bro, what are you doing? What is going on? I just saw an SCV moving out. What is this? Well, at least he's sitting at home. What are we going to do, guys? We're going to send one to the watchtower. Uh, one outside his base. And one to the top watchtower as well. We're just sending some marines everywhere. Why are we doing that? Why are we sending marines everywhere? Well, it's very simple. We just want to make sure we see what's happening. Our opponent's on one base, so we don't know what's happening. Well, he also could be going like Banshees or something, right? Okay, so we'll build an engineering bay. So we're starting to add some safety precautions because we are playing a one base player. We're also going to scan and go, hey, what's going on in here? Lots of Marines, lots of tanks. Now, that's fine. Tanks will be very scary siege. So if I don't see my opponent move across the map, I let him siege up here and we've got to run down the ramp, we will get ruined. Like destroyed like you've never seen an army get destroyed ever before. But we're playing bio, aren't we? Right? So what do we do with bio? Well, we stim in the open ground. So I'm even going to move my army out. The moment I see him leave his base with this marine spotter, I will move my army out there and we will greet him in the map. And it is Banshees. Oh, no. Someone was just asking about this in our first YouTube video, guys. Keep building that turret. Build another turret. Apparently, stim is not done yet. So we do a scan. We just keep building the turrets. Add on. Our SCVs are under attack. We've got another scan. Research. So we're trying to tell those guys to go down there, these guys to go up here. And it took some damage, but that's okay. So we could have scouted more because we saw that SCV leave the base, and that would have been really good, right? Because then we would have known what was happening. 
I'm gonna control click my idle worker button, send them there, and then go, wait, that's that's Bruce and Gary. They need to keep building depots. Now look at this main saturate natural saturated mains not, so we're gonna re-click that one there. Okay. And I wanna kill that starport, guys. So we're gonna grab these guys. More tank, more bio, some medevacs. Okay. Keep building depots. Come on, Gary. Keep building some SCVs. Now, has my opponent taken that base? So what are we doing? Okay, so he's expanding now. Okay, that's fine. So what am I doing, guys? My guys are all getting stuck behind each other, so we're just moving underneath it so they can all attack at once. Now, I'm not actually attacking him right now, right? But check out how turtled he is. We know he has tanks on a ramp. Oh, we really want to kill that. Kill it. Move back, move back. Okay. <laughs> so what we, we know, okay, it's time to continue our macro transition. So let's build our third on location. Why are we building it on location, guys? Because our opponent is turtling. But he's also, like, he's got he's got a tight ramp, depots, tank sieged. I don't want to attack out there. So what are we going to do? We're going to take these guys, put them on a separate hockey. We're going to tell those to go drop the mineral line. Everything else is just going to sit outside my base here. We're going to build more marines, more everything. Uh, this base is saturated now, so we can transfer those workers, take the gases. We can add that to the control group and send to the camera location all in one go there. We're going to build a depot, build another depot. Gary and Bruce can go non-stop from now. Because we've been off that habit for a while, it's going to be really easy to forget. So to make sure we remember, we'll do that. And we can drop left click, drop left click to make sure they unload. Oi! Die! Get out of here, Viking! And we're just going to stim an A-move at this point. He doesn't seem to have the upgrades, so I think this is an okay fight for me. And he does get a tank siege, which is kind of unfortunate. Looks like this is a one-way trip. Ignore it, go home and macro. We traded, we killed some stuff. That's fine. 2-1 upgrades, plus 1 vehicle weapons, and macro cycle. Marines, marauders, tanks, medevacs. Okay, but we're out of gas, and apparently this gas didn't take. So let's take it, put guys on it, and rally to the third, okay? We're solo on gas, so let's do something a bit different, guys. Let's immediately take both gases on the third, shall we? All right. What are we missing? Fourth and fifth barracks. Let's go. Fourth and fifth barracks. Gary and Bruce can keep going, even though we've probably got enough. So if we're being super high level, we would stop building depots for a moment. We'd pause on that. And right now, we're a little blind on the map. So, dump key, dumping key, dumping key, dumping key. Dumping key. Okay. Notice how I select my army? Those guys are no longer in my army because we used that dumping key from our very first session. Such a useful setup. It's so nice. More SCVs, more Marines, more tanks, more medevacs. Now notice, guys, I'm never having money left for tanks and medevacs. So if we're just spamming our keys too much or we're a little bit broke after taking some damage, come back to it. A little bit later, Q2 tanks, Q2 medevacs. So that's something that you've got to be really careful. Oh, good point from chat. So when I loaded up that drop, guys, point out that after you do the double drop, you redo the main control groups. The units and the medevacs are not in your control group. That's a good point. So even if you use control group stealing, when I throw these, let's do another drop and we'll do it on the, the if you drop that angle, he'll be ready for it. So we want to drop this angle next time. So I, I control group those, which steals them, but the units inside is still in my army group. So let's box these guys and let's control Two, or control one. Let's control one to remake our army. Obviously, these don't correspond down here correctly. So now the units inside there are no longer in the group, okay? A few more SCVs. Wait, we don't need SCVs. We've already got enough. So all we need is Marines, Marauders, Tanks, Medivacs. We've got two more barracks. We're going to build one tech lab, one reactor. We're going to build those two factories that we talked about earlier. Don't have a lot of space on this base, do we? Let's sell that bunker to open it up a bit. Our opponent's building a... A base out there. I think he's out of space, so we'll just kill that and then run back. <laughs> Alright guys, let's queue up lots of raids. Uh, let's put down a command center on a fourth location. Um, we can make... At this point, we don't need more SCVs, so we just add the factories to the control group. And we just make upgrades. Plus three, plus two, plus one vehicle weapons. And what are we holding down? Marine, Marauder, Medivac tank. Marine, Marauder, Medivac tank. So what would be really cool is doing some sort of multi-prong here. Um... I did say I wanted to use Liberators, so let's queue up some Libs, but I'm a bit short on gas with all this tank production, so I'll just queue up one Liberator to mix in there, just so you guys can feel the power of, of that. And he actually has a tech lab there, so we're just going to A-move, shift, A-move. So what am I doing, guys? I'm saying, look, 
There's no urgency right now. I just want these guys to clear that and then go back to my rally point. Use shift wherever possible. Very nice. When do you boost with the medevac? On the way in or the way out? Um, if you want to get there as quickly as possible on the way in, if you want to make sure you can actually still have it available to get out and be safer, then on the way out. So boosting on the way in equals uh, more dangerous, but potentially more damage. Saving it for the way out equals safer. And uh, if you're going to be microing it hard, that's the way to do it. If you're not going to be microing it much, you probably just want to boost on the way in. Get it in there, right? How do you stop your units unloading? So if you've gone for the drop left click like this, you've got to press the stop key. For me, it's H because I use that right side of the keyboard. So you just got to tap S. If you tap hold position, it's not going to do anything. Because obviously that doesn't actually tell it to stop. Stop actually clears the orders. So look, guys, our opponent's moving out to a third. Now notice our drop's just been waiting. Now, why didn't we drop before? Because our opponent was turtled up on two bases. So dropping didn't really make sense. What do you mean, pig? Well, what I mean is that if we just think about this, our opponent's got so little ground to cover, it, it wasn't going to be good. So now we're going to set up a super advanced maneuver that anyone can do. We're going to click a liberator at the top of the map, then the top left of the map, and then it's going to siege the main base. Our main army is going to attack this angle. It's not trying to force its way in. It's just trying to distract. And then this drop over here is going to drop in there. Okay? Now, our army is the most important thing. We cannot lose our main army, okay? So that's the most important thing. We're still building more tanks, more marines behind it. Let's scan ahead. So we see those tanks are sieged up. So let's go siege like there. And let's send this in to drop there, okay? Now, so we're trying to just siege there. Looks like I sieged a little bit too close, but that's okay. We're going to tell our bio to hold position here, okay? Now the Liberator's gone in, and these guys have gone in. Oh no, there's a tank. So I'm just gonna, I pressed stop. That's not a good space to unload because there's tanks there. So is there tanks up here? Looks like there is one, but we can drop in the back. Okay, out of range of the tank. We can tell them to unload there. We can just stim those guys, A move them. Don't want to chase into the tank though, right? So unless those Vikings land, we don't want to get lured by A moving. Oh, and he's going to actually fight us. So we want to move into the Vikings and try to kill them. And then we want to pull back and aim. Okay. Scan the front. So notice how tanks are in range of the planetary. Now if he moves forward, our tanks will keep siege and shooting the planetary. So we would need to click them on the tanks. But... So what's really interesting, I'm sure some people are like, how fucking dare you do that to a gold player? Pig, how dare you do that? Guys, it's fine. Um, was that abusive as all hell? Yeah, of course it was. Of course it was. Um, but we were in a game where nothing was happening for five minutes. Our opponent did no pressure to us after those early banshees. We were in control. They were just slowly expanding. I was maxed. I was at 200 supply of depots. I had five barracks and three factories up. I could have added some more barracks. I could have added more command centers. But what was more important was I was getting in at a moment before my opponent made a three star port. I think they were trying to go battle cruisers. It might have been because they have a fusion core. So I think they were trying to go three star port battle cruiser, right? So three star port battle cruiser. That would have been a problem. I don't have much that shoots up. I have a pack of marines. They've got good upgrades. So they might have been okay. Like a lot of marauders and tanks. So it was kind of important that I actually went and did some stuff at that moment in the game, right? So um, I think that's totally fine. And the power of the Liberator sieging in there, super sick. Super, super sick. But we saw that with TVT, often they have tanks, they have a planetary. Our goal here was not, I'm going to just shove through you. Right? It's, I'm going to hit you everywhere else. And then if he split almost all of his army to deal with that, and there was like just one or two tanks left here, then we could have been like, oh, you've only got a few tanks. And we could have done it here because he actually didn't have much. We could have been like, oh, okay. Start a step, move forward, A move, move forward, A move, move forward, A move. And assuming he'd unsieged a bunch of these tanks to go back and defend the main base and everywhere else where he was getting ruined, then that would have worked. And if not, what else could we have done, guys? Well, we just killed all of his Vikings. So... We could have done this as well. And we could have even brought tanks, but even if we were too lazy to bring our tanks, we could have just boosted in. And even if they have some missile turrets, maybe you lose one or two medevacs. Oh, whoops, bad micro there. 
<laughs> Excellent. He only had one medevac selected. Even if you lose one or two medevacs, suddenly you're in his main base, killing his production. He's so fucked, right? He's screwed. So that's going to be awesome. Pig, if your build order gets messed up because of pressure, what do you do with your build? As we've been, we've been, we've had that a bunch of times. You go back to your build. So this is why you don't, you don't want to obsess over like supply counts, right? So that's a really good question because like, look at the previous, um, the previous replay. Perfect example of that, right? So this is, I'll, I'll show you. Oh, I just got the play replay uh, achievement, guys. So this game, my, my build got thrown off. So this is why it's important to remember in order. So a lot of people focus too much on the numbers, but you should be able to list off in order what's going on. Pig, what's the removal hotkey, says a bonable uh, toast. Well, I, I talk about how you can set it up on a bunch of different things um, in, in our first video. So exclamation mark BDGM, after the very first game in that first video, um, we go through all the mechanics bit by bit. So if you go through that, you'll get all the information on the mechanics. I um, I might misremember it because I, I use a different key personally because I use the core, which is a very advanced hotkey setup. I believe we set it up on, it was either tilde or caps lock. I can't remember which one. I think it was tilde that we used as the dumping key. I think it was tilde. Is that a Twitch rod? Exclamation mark BDGM. Guys, please help out the, uh, the newbies in chat. Every time someone asks, Hey, you know, about a mechanical this or that, please do help us out, someone. So that that's the first video. The second video, um, quite immediately following that will be up soon, but that has all the mechanic stuff in it. Thank you, Slossom. Yeah. Um, remember, you guys can watch everything on Twitch right after it's live, but it'll be up there. So anyways, let's look. Well, what do you do if your build gets messed up, right? So we were about to be at 35 supply, building a factory, starting depot production at this point in the game, right? In, in a moment, that was the next step in the build order. But then this happens. Our opponent does a three hatch Ling Flood, slow Zergling Flood even, which is crazy. And I've got to like, I grab everything and I click on my mineral line. We try to get inside the mineral line. I accidentally pause for a moment there. So I almost lose all my Marines. Then I got to fight with my SCVs. I did a super hardcore maneuver here. Remember guys, I just grabbed the front line of SCVs and I go hold position. And I could have just grabbed everything and hold position, but I really like the front line of SCVs. And then, and you're gonna see the effect this has. Right, the Zerglings don't count the SCVs as attacking units on the front, so they're trying to get at the attacking SCVs and the attacking Marines. That probably saved me three or four SCVs extra there. Super hardcore move, but feels really good when you pull it off. I've seen people in Gold League pull that off. They usually are lacking in other areas, but <laughs> it's a cool trick. So anyway, but then I lose a bunch of SCVs nonetheless. My build's off. I'm not building SCVs or dropping mules right now. They come in with like another wave and another wave. And I'm just building Marines and SCVs right now, trying to like keep up my, my macro cycles and keep spending my money, right? So the thing is, in this scenario where you're fighting for survival, obviously we don't need to stress over it, but we need to remember the order. So I was like, dude, this guy's going to keep flooding. Oh shit. And he's actually got so many Zerglings, he might overwhelm me. So I threw a wall down. The engineering bay is out of order. Whee! Is auto repair enabled? No, never auto repair in, in combat. Don't ever do that. There's very specific scenarios where you can use it. Like repairing a bunker. You might want to just have a bunch of SCVs next to it on auto repair. But the problem is if they're auto repairing, they're not attacking. So if your SCVs are auto repairing each other, when you aim move them, they won't fight. They will repair each other. And if they're repairing each other, they are not considered attacking units, which means your opponent's units will automatically ignore them and get after your Marines. So they can kind of not serve their function as a meat shield as well. So don't don't bother with repair micro in fights. Think of your SCVs just as fighters and maybe shield wall, right? So anyways, after all this um, settled down, as soon as I got that wall off up, uh, minutes late, I was like, okay, what's next in the build? And I went, well, I've got the three barracks. I've got depots building but I haven't started the factory. So, okay, let's get the factory started. And then what else do I do? Well, okay, I mean, I get my add-ons, my, my upgrades as normal. And then I, I said, okay, well, after the factory, it's obviously starport reactor, but I took a quicker third command center here than normal. Now, why? Because that was the next thing in the build order. I already had plus one on an engineering bay. I had, I was going to a factory in starport as fast as I could. I wasn't missing any production, SCVs or bio. So at some point here, I just drop a third CC way quicker than in the other games simply because I don't have the factory and star put up. So I, I'm not able to dump my money into Metavax yet. So it's all important for you not to just remember a set of numbers, but remember the order. The numbers help you out, especially early on for like remembering what the hell is going on and all that sort of stuff. But as you develop as a player, you kind of need to um, just know the inherent order. of I do this, then this, then this. 
Okay, Warthog vs. Snarky Goblin. I like this name. So we're playing TVP here on Glittering Asses. And, um... Have I done Bronze to Gene with the other races? We've done one with Zerg, and, um... I guess there's a decent chance we'll do one with Protoss once we're finished turn, maybe a month or so out. It takes a while to finish a bronze to GM, and I only like to do it one day a week, because otherwise I think it's very boring for me to just keep explaining things on this level. Whereas if I do it just like once a week, it's like the right amount where I'm actually like excited to teach, you know? Uh, if I do it every day, I think I'd burn out real quick, so I like to just keep it one day a week. It's this same day every week. We skip the last two weeks uh, because we had to prepare the Pigsty Festival and then do Pigsty Festival. We did a, a week-long stream there. Five days, 24-7, and then two big uh, semis and grand finals days, which is awesome. Is Claw bad to learn from the beginning? Do you mean like Claw and your mouse grip? I think that's fine. Um, it's not too bad. Um, I do think the more you use your forearm, the better, whether Claw or otherwise. But it's one of those things, so we're gonna send this SCV around, scout, hide behind the base. Um, if you're talking about Claw grip, then um definitely you don't want to have too high dpi and doing these like, tiny little little movements so if, if that's what you're doing with it probably better to lower the dpi a little bit but everyone has different setups i know plenty of people who get to a pretty reasonable level playing on tiny mouse pads on tiny screens and all that sort of stuff uh it's just a dumb meme from home story cup crip the glittering asses um a couple of non-native english speakers themselves trolling each other um saying oh no it's glittering asses Petit Drew being like what pretty sure it's ashes like ashes from a fire oh guys this guy doesn't have buildings in his base so we're getting proxy oh my okay guys so what are we gonna do command center on the high ground so this guy's gonna hide down there We're gonna build a bunker up here. Uh, maybe there. And we're just gonna scout around our base to see what's up, okay? So we're gonna build a bunker immediately, because this needs a very immediate response. And we've got, what, two gateways there? Okay. Okay, so this guy's got two gateways. So we're just gonna... Um, do we have a deep? We don't have a depot. I forgot my depot because he blocked me from walling off the piece of shit. So we're gonna raise that one. It's still like a semi wall off. Ooh, my, okay, my marines do have enough space, at least. That's good. So, I still want to um, try and kill that and wall off if we can. What do we do now, guys? This is stressful. This is the first game in Bronze to Jam I've had to react What's to a, a straight-up cheese. So, we keep building units, and we still follow the build, okay? But we just have the bunker on the high ground. So, we'll build the extra depot ahead of time just to get that wall off up. And um, we just keep building marines, essentially. We've got one SCV ready to see if he expands. And behind it, what's the next step of the build, guys? Back to the build order! Now, I'm telling this guy to hold position so he doesn't show up as an idle worker, okay? So what's in the build order, guys? Three barracks. Build two barracks, go, go back there. All right, what do we do after that? We get a second gas. Don't stop building Marines. All right, so I don't know what my opponent's gonna do with those gateways. They could add a Stargate, they could go DTs, they could go all sorts of things. But you know what? We got a wall, DTs can't get in here, we're fine. We don't need to worry about anything. Two dudes on gas, keep building SCVs, keep dropping mules. And as we get up more units, there will be a point where we want to expand. A lot of people will go, well, he hasn't attacked, I should do it. He does not have a base. Now, technically, he could have taken an expansion elsewhere. So it might be a good idea to try and sleep, sneak a scout out. So we're going to go and check gotcha. every single base go, go, go. on the map. Just like that. Two tech labs. Let's get the factory down. And we'll get the engineering bay. Why? Because whenever our opponent's still on one base, DTs, void rays, oracles, all the sneaky shit is an option, right? So we just kind of make that out of uh, wanting to survive. And we can keep building SCVs. We can't really use them right now, but as soon as we move down to the natural, we can. And we're going to just send one marine out over to those gateways. See, what the hell's going on over there, man? Start stim, combat shields. And when those upgrades finish, we can probably just kill our opponent. Because their build's being so much less efficient. And we see, oh, it's a pack of stalkers. Okay, let's move right up so when he runs on this ramp, he loses everything. And we can get plus one weapons up there. We can get a starport, reactor. Oh, and he's going all in. So the thing is, remember, your opponent 
doesn't have high ground vision unless he's on the ramp. So we're going to move up here. When those upgrades finish, that's when we can go down there. It's really tempting because you're on one base. You're like, fuck, I want to go. I want to go down. We're also going to send the SCV to quickly scout, see if there's any sneaky tech. Oh, Gary and Bruce. Gary and Bruce. Drop a supply block. Drop to help out. Oh, and he's going to run up the ramp. So that's not a good idea for him. If we were more afraid, we would hide behind the bunker for sure. But as it is, this is totally fine. Gary and Bruce keep building depots. We see a Twilight Council. So he could go DTs, he could go charge. It's a few different things. We're going to make medevacs now, guys. And are those upgrades finished? How long? We need another 25 seconds. Okay. Let's just take a look. See. No shield batteries yet, so that's good. We don't really want to let him build shield batteries there, guys. That would kind of be annoying. So. Let's build concussive as well. And it looks like it's going to line up to have two medevacs, which is actually really nice. So we're going to do something super pro here, guys. We're going to sell the bunker. We're going to move the marauders forward. The marines behind. We're going to grab everything. Stim's done. What are we going to do? Stim. A move. Move up. A move. Keep producing units because we've done all the micro we need to do. And if Stim runs out, we can press it again. Move forward. Stim and a move. Okay, so we can go take out the proxy because that's most of his production. And behind it. Oh my god, we can finally expand, guys. Grab all of my idle SCVs, send them all down there. Oh, and he's still warping in units here. Let's kill that guy. Just click on him. Kill all of this. Okay, so let's grab everything. Looks like he's trying to expand. Let's take the two gases. Uh, so guys, we don't have a lot of medevacs right now. And do you know why? We don't have any gas. So it's very important we immediately take these gases. Keep building SCVs. But we also can just go kill our opponent. Why? Because he doesn't have anything. We just killed two gateways. He's been on one base. Our army traded so well because we waited till Stim and Shields. Now, standing on top of the ramp in front of the bunker was a bit of a mistake because that was pre-Stim and Shields. I thought the, the high ground advantage would do it. But uh, yeah, we probably should have been a little bit more cautious till those upgrades kicked in. Now, this was a bit of a drastic departure, right? Pig, you had to do all these different reactions. Not really. I built my command center on the high ground and built a bunker straight away. And then I went and did the exact same build as normal. That's it, right? Okay, let's scan. What do we got? No units? Okay. He's got a few zealots. Siege our tank and stoom. If we wanted to start a step, we would do it away from the zealots. Run back. Okay. Obviously, we could do that a lot better as well. Uh, we're just trying to do it at a nice, slow pace. It's very obvious what we're doing, right? Whenever we want to get in there to kill stuff, we move in, and then aim. We move in, and then aim. We stim one more time. And Snarky Goblin, unable to break us there with the one base. Four gate build order. Five gates even, maybe. Um, just a big old gateway all in. And the big response was just that SCV just stayed there. We said, you're still on one base. I'm just going to sit on the high ground. Because you're making units on one base. I'm making units on two bases. Even though I haven't floated it down, whenever I do, my economy is way bigger than yours, right? Because I've already been building SCVs two at a time. And I'm muling my base, which means I'm getting way more mining. Because I'm dropping two mules at a time, which is like a whole bunch of extra work is mining, right? So I'm massively ahead income-wise. Um, so there's there's no urgency for me. Not only that, um, yeah, I just sit on my high ground and I'm like, cool, when these upgrades kick in, I have a big power spike. If you're just massing basic units, your units aren't going to scale well. And my opponent did try to go four gate into the Twilight Council, but it was, um, yeah, it was just, my opponent here probably wins almost all their games because the Terran's like, well, he didn't attack. I'll sell my bunker and just stand my army. Oh, he killed me. This guy's completely on. Not only is he on one base, whereas I'm on two bases, mining way more, but he also built his buildings on my side of the map. If at any point he loses control of this area, he loses his first two production structures. Can you imagine if you lost your first two barracks just because you couldn't control an area over here at your opponent's third base? So this is insanely committed. 
So this is actually really, really hard. Can you just do stop command instead for your starter step? Is it pretty much the same thing? Uh, it's similar enough. I like A move and most pros do A move, but stop works in most scenarios. Yeah. Gold one. Oh, right. Well on our way to gold one. So this macro transition is really nice um, that we're learning. You guys will see it's kind of the same thing that we're doing in the early game. And quite a few of our games, we're still winning just with the first big bio attack, right? And some solid fundamentals. But it is nice that we've got a third base and we're also adding that triple factory transition, which is really cool. And I think when we do get to platinum and start playing mech, which it looks like will be during today's stream at the very least, um, if we keep going this way, then, then we could absolutely level up really fast. Uh, so we just got plus 62 MMR. Wow, so much MMR from that game. And we do need to get so we're at 2675, we need another 125 MMR to get through to Platinum, which is insane. So we're climbing really fast here. Um, if someone's learning the core, would you recommend doing it while learning a new race? Like, I, I want to start learning Terran. Do I learn the core at the same time? Uh, it can be better because you don't have anything to unlearn. So it could be really easy to learn the core that way. Also, it's going to take... It's going to, on the other hand, it's going to delay you getting into the feeling of playing the game, probably, because it is a little alien, the core, if you're used to playing other games, you're used to using a certain side of the keyboard, it's going to take a little while to get set up. So as always, the core is something I only recommend to super hardcore nerds who literally are the sort of person who spends probably just as much time reading up build orders for strategy games and like fucking discussing on forums like if you're the kind of nerd who sits in a forum spending m just as much time talking about your civilization uh, fast library research uh, mountain optimization or some shit like that than actually playing the game then the core is for you if you're not that level of super like nerdy intricate i'm gonna go and study this and and figure out how to learn it and and have this optimized style if you're not someone who's maybe learned an instrument before or coding if you're not that level of like nerd who likes learning little mechanical techniques and optimizing things, don't you don't need to learn it. No one needs to learn it. That's why if you look at the mechanics in the start of our video, our first bronze to GM, I show you guys how to modify a standard layout in a way that's pretty good and what most of the population use, including most pro gamers use a very slightly modified standard hotkey layout. So the kind of person who loses it, who who, who learns Dvorak key layout. Yeah, basically. Those guys, those people pick up the core like so quickly. They're like, oh, I, I use Dvorak. I'm like, yeah, you can learn the core very quickly because you're such a nerd, right? Um, so just make sure if you guys are a bit too much of a chad, maybe you like have too many friends, maybe you work out, play sports, the core is probably not for you. So just <laughs> and just be realistic with where you are on the chad divergence scale, guys. <laughs> if you're more on the virgin end like me, the core is for you. <laughs> um... <laughs> uh very nice yeah if you're into programming or you you've learned an instrument to a pretty high level you'll be better at it, at learning learning new hotkey layouts and stuff it seems like the protoss player could have just run home at the start of that to save the army absolutely do a rip opponent overstayed their welcome but we've seen this in a few of our games we've seen players who are in good positions and then they kind of set up on our doorstep and they just sit there and what are they doing they're containing us so remember Doa, um containing this is the most powerful strategy bronze silver gold platinum except it's not it's what everyone tries to do and it's the worst thing ever um because what is containing your opponent it is a vague concept of i will set up my units here and contain them and that works if you're in a real military situation where you can tell your soldiers to dig in trenches and hold a position. You can't do that in StarCraft. Because if you then put all your efforts into macro at home, you're not reinforcing your army. It's getting weaker. At a certain point, they're just going to break out with way more units than you. Or you're not going to watch and you're, your army's going to get baited into their army really badly. You're going to take a terrible fight while you're not looking. Or you'll keep committing to the units and the army, but they're not actually forcing the trade. And if your opponent just sits back gets a few upgrades or a bit of a, a power spike and then engages, you lose. So a lot of people make this mistake of, oh, I'm going to contain my opponent. And I'm like, the problem is, are you macroing or are you microing? Where are you putting your eggs in the basket? If you're going all army, cool, let's hit a sharp timing and utilize that army at the timing when it's strongest in the best way possible. There are, there are times where you back off and you maybe shark around a little bit, scare them a bit, con contain them and then pull back after a minute or so. But a lot of players in the lower leagues, they, they end up sitting on their opponent's doorstep, 
not really doing anything for a long, long, long time. And at a certain point, your opponent's like, oh, I just got three Colossus with range. I'm just going to push out and kill your bio army that was sitting here for too long. And you're like, oh. So it's a very common mistake to, to just sit in your opponent's territory and kind of distract yourself from what your intentions are. And that's where any plan goes out the window. Am I macroing or microing? Am I gearing up for what army? What's my next attack timing? What's my next power spike? And if you're not thinking about any of that, you're not going to be playing a good game of StarCraft. So go home, formulate a plan. Okay, uh, we're going to make four more tanks, plus two attack, and then we're going to go for a big tank tank bio timing. That's a good strategy. And you can you can cut your SCV production, focus on unit production, boom, 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 get that army, move out, try to make it work. But if you just sit there for too long on your opponent's doorstep, you end up in this kind of vague zone of constantly distracting yourself, looking at your army, going, oh, yeah, I'm containing him. This feels good. And um, there are scenarios where it can be useful. TVT, especially if you're actually denying a base holding a ramp, it can be really nice. But even then, how often do we see players do that, rally everything across the map and die to a doom drop? Far too often. So just be, be very, very clear in terms of what your intentions are at all point in a StarCraft game. Anytime you find yourself vague or unsure of what you're doing, those are the points you want to hone in on as a player. You want to look at the replay and go, okay, next time I'm here and I'm going, what the shit do I do? What will my plan be next time? And if you can come up with a plan, it doesn't have to be a perfect plan, you'll play much better StarCraft. Because the moment you've got a plan, all your forces are working in one direction. And that's much better StarCraft. Um, how do I know when to push when building units off two base, says Metasystem? Uh, you've got to make a decision. It's a, a kind of exactly what we just talked about. I mean, with, with our builds, what we're doing here, we have preset attack timings. We are attacking with the first two medevacs and stim and shields and a big pack of bio. And then we are attacking... We were doing a two base all in where we would attack with three or four siege tanks and a, and a whole big pack of bios. So we'd have these two preset attacks. Now today, it's pumping, and we chose like three or four tanks as our attack timing. Today we're doing more of a macro transition, so it's a bigger three base push. Um, usually we have five or six tanks and just a big pack of bio, but you might want to come up with a, a stricter rule. You're like, when my plus two attack kicks in, that's when I'm moving out already. It's up to you. Choose, choose and stick to it, though, is the most important thing. So don't worry about what's optimal. Worry about choosing a clear path and then figuring out what it's good at and what it's bad at and, and how to refine it and, and do better. What do we get? Oh, me, oh, my. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for the love today, guys. We are here in a TVT as we continue um, our brothers to GM. Okay, so let's set the rally point. Queue up another SCV. Remember, as that SCV pops out, rally SCV back ready. to minerals build our depot let's go that is going to be scv number two now of course my hotkeys don't really correspond guys remember keep that in mind i'll stop repeating that four thousand times throughout the show at some point but <laughs> for now just trying to onboard newcomers who've just tuned in what could i say well look at that guys we're doubling it up we're doubling it up how nice is that doubling it up doubling it up all right we're gonna go oh that's a misplaced barracks guys that's why we should have used our camera location. Ah, oh, well, it's all good. Anyways, keep up more SCVs. We're going to take this guy, as always, do our little scouty scout, and then try to hide behind the base. This was a Terran player, so it should be pretty chill. Um, and of course, let's set up our camera locations. Number two, number three, number four. Remember, we want those bases in front of our expansion so that we can't be doom dropped easily. And we're going to take these two guys, click them there, and tell them to return cargo. All right, so... This guy can mine minerals and then build the command center. This will be our last SCV until orbital. Look at that, we're doubling the workers up. Isn't that nice? So remember, it's going to be reactor and orbital. So I can actually go reactor and orbital off my hotkeys. So we're going orbital, reactor. Just needed to wait for 50 gas. Is that a factory? Yeah, whatever. Looks like it is. Cool. And we will leave the base now. Super standard. Don't you dare wall me in there. Oh, he just attacked his own barracks. My opponent don't like SCVs now. I just did a super pro move, guys. I told the SCV to go there and then hide back here. So he wouldn't see the direction my SCV was going. I also... I just left my wall open. I built... It. Whoops. I forgot to look at home. I was like, guys, you can build your reactor in your orbital while looking at your scout. And then I'm like, wait, my barracks was meant to lift off. It's okay. Let's just pretend that wall doesn't exist. It's TVT. It'll only matter if my opponent drives a bunch of Hellions in. And we build so many units with this build. That shouldn't matter. There is a very small chance my opponent goes like Mass Hellion Reaper and drives into my base and I lose because of this opening. It's okay. Don't get distracted. You've already made the mistake. Obsessing over it's not going to help anybody. He says while obsessing over it. 
Um, accept your situation in the game and move on to the next step. Two barracks. Keep building SCVs. Keep building Marines. Can Hellions get through that gap? That's right. That's a, that's a single space gap. It's a, any unit that's not like a uh, tank or a Thor, something like that, could, uh, could fit through there. Let's take that second gas. If it was like a weird little diagonal gap, then then no, a Hellion wouldn't be able to get through it. Only like a Zergling or a Marine or an SCV would be able to. Let's put two guys on gas straight away. These guys are already queued back. Let's set the rally points there. Keep building Marines. Awesome, guys. And we're almost at 35 supply. What do we do at 35 supply? What have we very slowly gotten better at remembering during this series? Very, very slowly. Let's go double tech lab. Factory. And also depot. And then we'll start putting the rest of the depots out there. All right, SCVs, SCVs, mules. Another SCV there. A few more Marines, and remember? While we're building those marines, I always like to add those to my control group. And we can queue up another depot, car. Gary. All right, we can control group our factory. And this SCV is ready to build the starport next to it. We can go stim, combat shields. Oh, okay. Let's grab some SCVs as well as our marines and attack here. Let's shoot the uh, medevac there. Keep building SCVs and mules. We've done all the micro we can do for this scenario, guys. So my opponent just went for a bit of a crazy Roger drop that. there. Now, I forgot to build a bunker. Whoops. I should have already built a bunker, shouldn't I? Bit of a mistake for me. So guys, more SCVs, more Marines. Most important thing after any distraction, macro cycle. SCVs, mules, Marines, depot. Wait, we don't need a depot right now, so we can skip the depot for one round. Instead, get the other stuff. Okay, cue that guy back. More SCVs, more Marines. And now we can build the depot. Whew. But remember, every time you get distracted, okay, obviously you deal with it, but the moment you identify, like there, I was like, okay, I've A moved my Marines and some SCVs. There's nothing else I can really do. I could have done better micro there, by the way, um, from the start. But we're trying to, you know, not do too much fancy micro stuff. You guys can learn fancy micro anywhere. Watch, go watch some Mario games and then fail to execute it, right? Um, <laughs> okay. We're going to leave our units in the middle here because it's TVT and drops and things are so scary. Go there, build a tech lab. Let's get Bruce up here to help Gary out. More Marines and Marauders. And Medivacs. Oh, our opponent is expanding, so that's good to know. And they're taking lots of gas very early, which is interesting. So, battle cruiser transition, anybody? Remember, guys, if you feel that something might be the case, it always is the case, and you should... Oh my god, I was trolling. I'm gonna build a cyclone and some uh, Vikings, guys. Okay. I was super trolling there. I was, like, super trolling. Ready for dust off. So we're going to move underneath and then start a step to do lots of damage. We're building more Vikings now. And we lost a lot of guys there. Um, let's build an engineering bay. Well, let's not build it there because that's where we need to be able to move stuff. Um, we've got a cyclone there. So check this out. I don't think he can hide from that. Oh, he can. But look, faded. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> we flew the medevac in and she shook her booty. But he was, oh, got super baited by it. That's awesome. All right, Gary and Bruce, keep building. Um, all I did was stop building marauders, guys. Only marines. I built a cyclone and some vikings. And I'm not going to build any more cyclone, cyclones because they're just kind of janky. One or two is really good initially, but after that, it's kind of like, eh. I okay, guess so we got the third CC. Let's build two gases. Let's get plus one weapons. Let's try and. What we're going to do is we are going to do the first time where we actually need to do proper micro, guys. Two control groups on our army. This is the first time we've needed to do that. A lot of people would have liked to put their tanks on different control groups earlier. I like to control everything manually unless there's a very specific reason. And in this case, that specific reason is these Vikings need to run away and move and shoot when the fight happens against the battle cruisers, okay? So we're, we're on non-stop 
uh, Viking production. And what we're going to do is we're going to build two turrets there and two turrets here. And you might be like, whoa, that's a lot. <clears throat> but that's because we're also going to go for an attack. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to drop like one more mule. Okay, so we're going to move across the map for an attack. So first things first, if your opponent's doing troll shit like BCs, you want to always scout the corner bases. So we'll do that. And we'll also send a uh, Marine to each third base to see if he's got either of them. While we're moving across the map, what do we need to do, guys? Marie, second engineering bay. We've already got the third out. So what are we going to do? If we want to set our rally point, we can select our command centers, shift, deselect the one that's floating, and then right click there. It's a nice trick. So you see my opponent is doing what mech players do. What do mech players do, guys? Um, illegitimate bullshit. So basically, he's trying to just expand everywhere and hoping I'm too busy dealing with like the harassment and stuff and reeling from that to the point where I'm going to die. So let's scan up in the main just to see. It looks like Banshees are coming now. We're going to make an orbital there. And what about the front? So there is one tank defending this base. So we're going to do a very complicated move. This is where you stim and then attack move. Notice how the attack move was done in the general direction of our opponent's ship. And we're going to go up there as well and kill that tank as well. Now, we don't want to go in the natural. We want to kill the expansions. Why go? There could be other stuff up on that cliff. Oh, look at this. Don't. He's trying to lure me into his tanks. Notice he's trying to lure me, guys. And he's tried to run his command center away. Did he float it that way? No, he's floated it to the north. It's up here. Oh, I forgot to bring my Vikings, by the way. Okay, guys, let's... While we're command center hunting... Where the fuck did the command center go? Maybe he cancelled it. Maybe he cancelled it. Okay, guys, let, let's just pull back in macro now. Let our units heal up, because we have very few medevacs, okay? So let's build a few more medevacs. Add the Vikings to the key. Tech lab, reactor. You know what, guys? It's TVT. They should probably all be reactors. Because it's TVT, we want to go all reactors. More marines later on. We'll, we'll try and start being a little bit more specific to each matchup. Lots of SCVs, some mules, some depots, more marines, more tanks. And we're going medevacs now, not vikings. We also aren't worried about BCs anymore. So we're going to set our rally points out the front. We can sell the bunker. Two one upgrades, plus two attack. We're going to take two gases. What's the next part of the build? Two gases on the third so that we can afford second and third factory. Juicy! Now at this point... You might be thinking, well, you got him back to two base, you're winning the game, you're doing good. Yeah, maybe, but our opponent is still making double armory, triple factory, and it's still a cheeky bugger. So we're going to, once again, dump a marine, dump a marine, we're going to dump a marine, dump a marine, dump a marine. Now, I was stimming those to speed them up. That's just a little bonus thing. You don't need to do that. We're building only marines, tanks, and, uh, and whatnot. If he was playing a bit more mech, I'd probably be mixing in a few more marauders. But as it is, we don't really need to. We're going to drop a supply drop to help out Gary and Bruce there. And guys, we're at 67 SCV, so that's more than we, we need. Let's build a fourth base. Take a fifth base. This guy knows how to defend. Why am I macroing so hard, guys? Because my opponent knows how to defend. What was that? And do counterattacks and be cheeky. So against this sort of player, it's more important than ever for you to pick where and when you fight. So look what... So we just found he's trying to do like these little run buys everywhere. And he's going to come forward and try to focus some medevacs down. And he'll get some, but he will lose his whole army. And we're going to attack on forward here, okay? Now, we have lots of tanks, lots of marines, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to scan and go, oh yeah, this guy's building tanks everywhere. For sure, look at this. And they're layered. So like I said, this player is going to be really hard for me to, to deal with, okay? Okay, so how do we attack this? Oh god, oh god, oh god! Well, there's a lot of really advanced things we can do. We're going to do a really basic bitch maneuver called the Viking Land. And we're just going to spread them out, tell them to land, and aim at everything else, okay? Let's see if it works. I'm not doing any other micro, I just told my Vikings to land. There's a tank back there, so let's click on it. We mega clumped our army there. That was really bad. We should not have done it. <laughs> Run back. <laughs> Let's grab the next army, bring that forward. I think it's okay, though, because we know that he doesn't have an expansion. So remember, in this case, you don't need to kill your opponent. You just need to chip off the expansions. Don't click your units between a turret and a planetary fortress to clump up, guys. I think we just learned something there. Remember, 
Always tell your, your, your tank, if it's shooting a planetary, you need to manually target other units. So what can we do, guys? If we click his tank, you can see the dotted line. So what are we going to do? We're going to tell these guys to siege up just inside. Now, he doesn't have a spotter. We do. So he can't see me. We can see him. Okay. Same thing here. Move this tank forward as well. We're just going to tell that medevac to hold position. Okay. What are we doing behind this, guys? Well, we're just going to go home now and transfer workers. Okay. Planetary. Planetary. My base is under attack, apparently. We just killed the planetary. So that's very good. Is there anything down there? Looks like no. Cool. Let's assume this army is dead. We don't even care about it, okay? It's doing a job by being annoying. What are we doing? A new army down here. All on one hotkey. We don't need to do anything special. More marines, more tanks. And let's get three, two upgrades. Let's get plus two vehicle weapons. We're a little low on gas, so I guess we can take some gas as well. If the game, if your opponent's very annoying with harassment, this guy's really cheeky. If their opponent's being really annoying with harassment, you can do stuff like this. Sorry, that was a really fast response. I shouldn't have done that, guys. That was that was a little bit quicker than you guys would react. But if your opponent's harassing you, these are going to block libs and banshees and stuff, which is cool. Um, essentially, my opponent's pretty dead, right? What's he got? He's just got tanks and banshees. He's trying to be a bit of a sneaky bugger and, and see what he can do. So we're going to push forward with another army. And we'll grab, I think, most of these guys as well. And we'll group up and just try and push the other side. We'll try to do a bit of a frontal finish here, okay? Mineral field depleted. So Gary and Bruce don't need to be doing anything anymore. We can put guys on gas. If we were being super pro, we'd build the iron bank. We're not going to bother with that. We're just going to try and win. We're going to do this again. Where we can see them, they can't see us. Can't see. And we're just going to try and steal the remainder of this. Because he just has so much less stuff. So we should be able to just kill this now. GG. So our opponent was a really, really good player, and they forced us into some weird situations there, didn't they? Um, they were doing like a little tank drop to start, which they put in a very peculiar position. I think that could have been much more effective. So our opponent made a silly mistake there. So the best spot always to do a tank drop is you drop the tank there, because then you can kill the reactor, the depot, and it's just hard to get to. You gotta go all the way around. So pretty much every map has a spot like that where you can put a tank, guys. It's really good. Going in between the bases, it's kind of like, they wanted to like abuse the high ground, low ground or something, but it was just a little bit over the top. Now, if we'd built our bunker, we would have seen this even earlier, uh, but very dangerous, the angle they came in from, for sure. As it was, though, what was the most important lesson here? A move. We aim moved some SCVs, some Marines. I actually clicked on the medevac there to stop it unloading, but I don't know if I needed to. Probably wouldn't have changed the outcome at all. Then we went back to SCVs, Marines, SCVs, Mules. Build Marines. SCVs, heals, build Marines. Okay, now we've done a macro cycle. Now we can think about the next step, which is, of course, those add-ons. Uh, I guess these upgrades started just before the fighting started. Maybe it was just after it ended, actually. Some, I, think it was I think it was just after the fighting ended we started the upgrades. We go starport. We build the bunker, which we didn't start earlier. We forgot to start that. And we should be, you know, and we're just kind of like, okay, back on track, back on track. You know, go get up the medevacs and then go for a push, right? And... This is actually so funny that I saw the gases and was like, well, he's going battle cruisers and he's actually going cloak and a battle cruiser. So this was really well, like this is a very scary opening because a lot of people just don't build enough stuff, but we had enough Marines with stim and shields. Actually, yeah, yeah we had shields as well. So we were okay. We immediately built a cyclone and just swapped into Vikings for a little bit. And if my opponent kept building battle cruisers, we would probably never stop building Vikings. Maybe build a medevac hero there. But because at a certain point we realized, oh, this guy's not building anymore. Because remember, I think it... And the medevac bait, all you need to do is get an attacking range, pull it back. If he didn't hold position that, which he didn't, you can lure him to his death. And the Viking would have finished him off anyway, but that was cute. We wanted to get him before his tactical jump was cooled down. Now, at what point do I realize it's, it's, it's actually not that many BCs? Well, I'm still only building Marines and I'm building Vikings out of my production. But at a certain point, we see a Banshee, and that's what tells us. So I'm trying to remember when that was. Let's take a look. So we're just looking Marines, Tanks, Vikings, and there's a few little gaps in my production here, just because we're a little broke. And that happens as Terran, right? That, that does happen. I think it says we're moving out. 
Yeah, maybe as we go for this attack, we realize, oh, this guy's building banshees. So yeah, we scanned in a moment. Here we go. So we scanned, we saw a banshee, and we we're like, oh! Huh. But remember, we always check corners against the cheeky opponent. And how did we know our opponent was cheeky? They built a battle cruiser. And that was really important that we checked corners and checked and found these bases. Because if we gave our opponent a bit more time, these two bases turn into planetaries. There's tanks spread everywhere, plus missile turrets to block drops. And then they start harassing us with like cloaked banshees and going into like more battle cruisers and more tanks. And we're like, oh my God. And it can be a really hard game. So this attack timing was super crucial because we killed two bases, killed some tanks, we killed that banshee as well. We didn't chase into the tanks. Now, if we chased into the tanks, we actually would have won the game because it was only one tank. I assumed there was more tanks up here. I was playing very cautious, right? But if we look at this in hindsight, guys, my opponent was doing a bit of a silly build. They were very slow to actually build Marines. Their Marine count was really low. And because they went Battlecruiser and they went Cloaked Banshee and they went three factories without even getting five barracks up yet, this player never really got their production sorted. And they were focusing on silly things like high sec auto tracking while I was going to double eBay upgrades. So my Marines were always way better upgraded. My tanks were better upgraded. My opponent was spreading their tech in many different crazy directions at once rather than being focused. And, and that's absolutely a, a thing that kind of goes on. So GG's, um, very well played by my opponent there. You could tell they really, with the tanks, the turrets, the air units harassing, you can tell that they actually would be creating a lot of problems for the opponents. The early tank drop, the early battle cruiser harass, which they tried to then hide in the corner, taking lots of bases behind it. It was a mixture of aggression and greed. That's a very impressive play from Blue. So I, I really think that style is hard to deal with. And you guys saw me adapt quite a lot to the player. Um, still the same build order, still the same attack timings, but we had to adjust our composition just a little bit with Vikings instead of Medivacs for a bit, getting a Cyclone instead of a tank at one point. We needed to attack a little bit differently where we wanted to attack the exposed bases and we really prioritized not letting them get planetaries up until that one planetary, which we gave them a bit too much time and it killed 35 Marines and that was not very fun. Hey Scripter, what's up? Welcome. Why are the factories built in front of the second base instead of the main? Uh, we were just a bit cramped for space at that point. If you've got plenty of space in the main, you could probably squeeze them in. You just have to always be wary with your factories because you're building tanks or thaws out of them. Um, in this case, tanks, right? So they're two space units. So you need to make sure like a lot of people make the mistake of building a factory like here. You, if you build a factory there, where's your tank going to pop out? Here, it's going to like drive all the way around your mineral line and potentially get stuck if there's any buildings down here. So you've got to be really wary of... Um, oh shit, got to rally to the ramp, don't we? Let's get that defo going. Oops. So you got to be really wary of um, factories because a lot of people, by the time you get to your like your second and third factory, you're like, oh, I'll build it in this corner. And then the factory's popping out in this little corner. Factory is there and it can't move anywhere. And that takes you so long to fix. It's a big APM dump. So this is why I'll often go, oh, look, I've got space in front of my natural or my third base. I can pop two factories down there, right? So that's why I'm, I'm a big fan of just make sure your factories do not get surrounded. And guys, if I missed your question, please repost it. I just scroll up a little bit for that one. Obviously, I'm very focused on the commentary during the games. So if I missed one, if you posted it during the game, post it again at the end of the game. I, I encourage you to do it. So some people are like, oh, I don't want to be annoying. Like you clearly didn't want to answer that question. I'm like, no, it's just, I'm just trying to explain things as well as I can as I go. And that takes quite a bit of effort. And we're going to pull two SCVs because we pulled this a bit slow. So we're going to A-move. Oh. Oi! Yeah. Right, we can send one of those back. <laughs> those guys go on our gas a little bit late, but oh well. Die! 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 You, you die! <laughs> Sorry guys, I get very excited. Um, that is usually not worth your APM and time, but if they do Good run job. through the mineral line, eh, sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes it's worth it, okay, guys? Um, <laughs> sorry, I just, I can't help. I like having fun. Killing things is very fun. Only if they run through your mineral line. Don't ever try to like run behind the mineral line. And if they mineral walk, you will not get it. So if they've, if they've given that SCV a mineral walk command or they react really quickly, you're just not gonna get it. Oh, he's expanding too. All right, Shape Arch, I can bring my SCV home. There's nothing to scout. That's awesome. Okay, guys, so my opponent is going to be uh, scouting. 
uh, uh, command center expanding as well. So we're not getting cheese this game. We're not going to have to deal with a super fast rush. It's all about just optimizing our build order, hitting our macro, and doing what we can. This depot is a little late to start. You can see we're slightly supply blocked. About five seconds there. And let's build two barracks. Okay. So we're going to just rally onto that uh, reaper. Oh, hello, mate. Okay, this time it's worth it. <laughs> oh, I should have started stepped. I could have got it. It's all right, guys. We're, we're playing gold, gold league micro. That it's gold. It's, that's why I didn't do it. Yep, just it's for the fans. All right, we're gonna leave two down there, and everything else is gonna come to the front. Okay, so we're just gonna leave those guys there. That's just their job is to just hang. Okay. It's for the people who want to learn the game. Definitely not because I'm bad. All right, guys. So we've got those two. We've got the gas mining. Um. Opponent hasn't expanded, so like I said, we don't have to worry about anything really. So your tech labs, more SCV, more marine. Now, obviously, you can take a, a pause on your marine production if you guys are in a situation like this where they've expanded and you're like, nah, it's not that important. I want to get my, I like to get my factory up, my depot started immediately. I don't mind skipping some marine production. We'll move up to him and then kill him. Oh, we don't actually need a depot there, do we? Because it's a. Uh... Oh, hello. That was kind of scary. Is he standing here? Is he standing here? Roger that. Of course. Now you could run past. Two Reapers does beat two Marines, of course. That's okay. Uh, we've got SCVs building. We've got Marines building. Keep building SCVs and mules, first of all. And then some more Marines. Tap some more Marines. You see we're out of money, right? So this guy's going back to mining. So we need a Gary. And let's put one down there to see when drops come in. And then we can go back there. So the danger of that is that guy's not going to be in a consistent spot, right? So we're just going to build two one-off depots in this case. And I need to remember more SCVs, more Marines. I need to remember to fix that later. I need to remember because these guys are both queued back. That's dangerous, okay? So in this scenario, let's just grab a Gary ahead of time, build it even earlier than needed just to make sure I don't forget, okay? Mule, SCVs. And obviously that spent all of my money there. I accidentally queued up three SCVs per command center. Maybe a little bit much for this early in the game. That's good when you're attacking. Queue extra so that you don't mess up. Now we're going to swap the starport and the factory. The factory can go over here and build a tech lab. So let's build that there. So if we built a tech lab there, guys, and a tank pops out on the bottom left, it's going to have to drive all the way around. So we want to keep those avenues clear. Right. Okay, so what's next, guys? Well, Gary, don't stop. We're going to build a third command center. That'll be our third. That'll be our fourth. That'll be our fifth. We've got stim. We've got shields. We've got medevacs. Remember when those medevacs come up, that's our first attack timing, okay? So we're going to stop dropping mules. We go double gas. Add on. Complete. We can start a tank. And awesome. Ready for dust off. Keep building depots, Gary. Bruce is going to join you now. Or you guys are going to fall behind. And this is our first attack. Let's go. No, don't yes, heal sir. SCVs. They don't deserve your healing. Oh, That's hello. Fine. Oh! Move. You. Don't A move, guys. Wait till you're under. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, sure. Now we're moving across to the staging point. While we do it, SCVs and mules, marines, tank, and medevacs. Now, we didn't have any money left for medevacs there. I was kind of glancing at my money as I did that. Uh, no. Oh! Complete. Hello, you little shits. I saw someone else there as well. I think there's two reapers there. Yes, there is no hiding from daddy. How dare you. Let's do a scan. Does my opponent have a third? Doesn't look like it. Looks like they're just chilling. So we'll, we'll move over to the staging point. More SCVs, guys. Um, oh, we didn't get an engineering bay this game. Oh, no. I guess we go two engineering bays and an armory all at once. <laughs> if you want to make the orbital before you float it down, by the way, that's totally fine, guys. Um, Okay, more marines and stuff. All right, what do we got in here? So it's one tank. Oh, there's another tank on the high ground. This isn't going to work. There's not really much we can do here, guys. So we could try to do a drop. We want these guys. Oh, oh, he's coming out to fight me. Fight. We don't want to get baited in. Yeah, he's trying to bait us into his tanks. Okay, guys. So what are we going to do? No containing, okay? Dump, 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 and just go home, okay? We'll kill these rocks and then go home. Behind this. Keep building SCVs, keep Marines, 
tank medevac. Okay. And then what do we do in between? Oh, and then we go depot, depot, and then we go one, one upgrades. When you chose the third, fourth, fifth, you chose to go for a fifth. Would you generally advise to do a more standard play and expand close to the main in order? Yeah, I mean, it depends what you find fun. If you enjoy taking the gold, go for the gold. But it's very exposed. It sticks out like a sore thumb. So it's very hard to defend. Usually if you take a gold base, you want to kind of be quite aggressive to defend it. Because otherwise, you end up in this compromised situation. Like, if you're defending your main from a doom drop and then you're trying to defend your gold out there, it's two very far away things. Oh no. So my opponent's coming. That's okay. Looks like he's coming forward with a pretty big army. Let's uh, let's try and just pull our marines here behind our tanks. Let him move into it. Now on this map, you'll notice your main is very open to drops. And there's no way to get down here unless you break these rocks. So we're going to actually go four turrets in the main. Something I very rarely do. And we're almost maxed on SCVs, right? So more marines is okay. Let's go the gas and the factory transition now as well. Oh, these guys can... Don't, they don't need to be sent back. Okay. Oh, so my opponent did move out. Okay, so he didn't attack. I was like, where's his attack? So we're going to go around his army because we don't like breaking through tank positions. Though, my army is so much bigger than his, we probably can do that, right? He's got tanks back there as well. Let's go around anyway because this just seems like a good thing to do. So let's go. Two, four guys on each gas. More depots. More reactors there. More marines. More marines and marauders. More tanks. More, more everything. Okay. All right, let's go. Uh, we're just going to stim and he move up the natural. And we can just siege our tank straight away there. So when he comes back, we have some bio and tank there. Can't really come back into it. And these guys can do a lot of damage. So he tries to come back there. And GG's. So, a very nice angle. We chose to attack there. Notice we were just scanning everywhere and we found the, the weakest area. So this is why we stopped muling, guys. I actually did another mule there, but this is why you're meant to stop muling once you get to the point where you're thinking about an attack. So, preferably about 30 seconds to a minute before an attack. Um, you want to actually do that. You want to try and say, okay, it's 30 seconds, minute before an attack. Stop, stop muling. You can just scan everywhere and pick where you fight. A lot of people are like, oh, you're losing minerals. Who cares, guys? I can't even spend all my minerals. My opponent definitely can't either. And look at this. My opponent built turrets everywhere. Sensor towers, turrets, sensor towers, turrets. Random tanks all over the place. But they weren't defending the front. So my opponent in this game just got too focused on all these little, oh, what if they drop me? What if they do this? And they didn't have all the upgrades. They didn't have many marines at all, many tanks, and they didn't have any vision out front. Why is there a sensor tower here? The sensor tower should be on the front, right? So this is very common as my opponent got distracted thinking about all the different things and was doing them in like no real order. And I was just up in supply because we macroed really hard into this push. And I'm totally okay with us just queuing up a billion marines and marauders. You could argue my fourth and fifth barracks was kind of late this game, could have been down earlier. Yeah, fair enough. My engineering bays were definitely late. I forgot my first engineering bay earlier on, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You're jealous Terran can scan? Uh, what race do you play, Doa? Because as as Protoss, definitely against Zerg, it's, it's a bit more APM intensive to scout. But you can still do some cool shit. You play Protoss against Terran, Observers are the best. Just, just Observers are amazing. Versus Zerg, you actually usually can sneak an Observer up about here and just siege it up and leave it there the whole game because they usually don't have overseers running around their main. And then you can just kind of see everything popping out of their bases. So if you can get an observer up between their rallies, you can kind of see what's popping out. But it, against Zerg, you should always be kind of doing timing attacks anyway. So with your timing attack, you see, oh, there's no workers on their third base. They're, you know, with then, okay, I, you know, this guy has probably a big arm. This guy has a billion workers on his third base. This guy probably doesn't have much arm. How viable is mech in TVT? It's really good. It's really good. We're going to be doing mech for all of Platinum League, guys. And um, just as a taste. And then maybe when we're higher, we might do mech in some of the matchups. Like maybe TVZ mech or maybe TVT mech. We're probably maybe TVZ mech in, in Masters as well. Um, we'll see how it goes. Someone was asking about a safety tank. I don't see the question. Someone was saying, oh, what about a safety tank? Uh... You've got three barracks. You don't need a safety tank. You're building a lot of bio. Yeah. Why no containing, says Tweak. Uh, it's just too vague. 
Because it's, well, what are you gonna do? Your army just sits there? What if he comes, so, so if, I, if I decided to contain in this game, all I'm doing is distracting myself from more important things. If I leave my army here, what if he comes, sieges tanks there, and then comes forward and stims his marines on me, and I'm looking at home macroing? What have I achieved by sitting here? His third's in his main. He couldn't be floating. I'm not actually doing anything by sitting here. I'm hoping my opponent panics because I'm on his side of the map, but I'm also putting my army in harm's way while not focusing on it, all right? So that's why we don't contain Twiggy. It's just why would you why would you leave your army in a dangerous position unless you're actually planning to attack with it? Do you have 300 APM in the attention of the gods? Micro, macro, perfectly. If you do, you're allowed to contain. If not, do it at great risk. So someone's asked me how to save tank. I, I mean, we've got three racks. Definitely, if, if we know we're getting cheesed by something, we could probably build an early tank. But in this case, you're building three racks bio. Getting the medevacs out so you can heal your bio is actually probably more important than a tank in most scenarios. So that's why we don't build a safety tank, right? Yeah. I'm a Diamond 2 Terran. For my TFZ, I do a 2 base, 7 minute, 18 marine, 4 tank, 2 medevac attack with my stim, combat, plus 1 attack. I try scouting saturation at third to see if my opponent has been greedy, but I am more regularly getting overrun on that timing attack. The what's effective to this timing against better Diamond 1 Zergs. Any scouting tips for assessing if I am heading to a bad situation? Um, I mean, that sounds like a, an okay way to play, but if you're not actually harassing early game, you're kind of just relying on the Zerg having um, weak early macro to some extent, I would say. Um, you need something to keep the pressure on the Zerg, whether that be just a four Hellion dive that you do, then go into it, or a 2-1-1 opening. I don't, so I don't know what your opening is with that. If you're just sitting at home with a tank on the high ground building to that and nothing happens until then, you're going to be in trouble. What's rapid keys? Exclamation mark rapid, if you want to find out about that. I do. Vibes wants to jam. We get a tank out earlier. Why don't you go for an early tank? Okay, yeah, yeah I think we answered that. Because we've got three racks so early. We're totally fine. If you don't have three barracks, you don't have as much stuff. So, like, the power of, like, a tank on the high ground is going to defend a lot of things. But because we're just building a lot of basic units, we don't need that. Yeah. We just don't need it. So... If you are playing a 1-1-1 one, one, one build, go. say you're going for like, I'm going for a quick Widow Mine drop or something. Squeezing a tank out for safety gonna make you a lot safer. But because we've got three barracks pumping early on and we've got an early reactor. So even our first barracks is pumping Marines a lot faster than most other builds, like with a Reaper. We actually have a lot more just raw bio material. And right from the very beginning, we already scout, right? I don't know if, whoops, I'm gonna cancel that. I just wanted to be on location, okay? <laughs> Uh, misplaced barracks Re um but yeah i don't know if vibe scouts from the beginning but we always scout we we always scout from the beginning and it's a very basic scout but it just goes a diamond around the minerals hides behind the expansion tells us what's up okay so he could wall off cannons here so that's why we're putting an scv there guys um he won't be able to though because we've already killed him so what can you do send an scv to get in front Okay. Let's go. Now at this point, he could if another probe comes in, he could still go. So we just got two SCVs. We're gonna put those back to mining because we don't know if he's actually committing or not. SCV ready. So we're gonna go reactor still. I'm still gonna stick to my build. Uh -huh. But I'm thinking of walling off. Does he have a forge? What's going on? Yep. Oh, he's proxying. In the rear with the gear. So we're just going to wall off with the Deeper, because our opponent's doing what we would probably classify as some fucking yeah. jank shit. Um, Go ahead. And we'll build a bunker. Okay. So wow. this guy will hide here, see when my opponent command expands. Um, now you might be like, well, where's your command center, pig? You're absolutely right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for that in a moment. And we're going to go back to the normal build. It's just my opponent's Head doing on. such an extremely Complete. odd set of things that I'm going to get some defenses first. So... If we went the command center, we'd probably still be fine. But yeah. Um, so we built a command center there. So we're gonna stick to the normal path now. Could have put a gateway behind my natural or something like that. So notice we're telling the marines to pop out on the back and go there. And um, we could of course kill that gas as well as an option. Now, cause my command center is delayed, I'm gonna build one more depot ahead of time. And we are scouting around. We still haven't seen what's up. Let's uh, kill this gas in these pylons, by the way. So my opponent could just be incompetent. Um, so that's always an option. I think more and more that's what we'll... Yep, they built a forge 
after the initial. Okay, so we don't we don't need the bunker. I was like, there must be a gateway somewhere else on the map. But my opponent has actually not even got their cyber core yet, so that SCV will go in. Okay. So this game is over. Um, we've literally already won. Our opponent literally has nothing. I think they like cancelled their forge when they realized their attack wasn't working. And uh, you can imagine how that goes, guys. Uh, we're gonna hide an SCV for a later scout to see if our opponent expands. Yeah, so we, I was like, well, my opponent must have been faking it since they don't have a forge. Because this is not that much money, but my opponent literally just didn't do anything behind it. So it's just low-level low cheese execution from my opponent. And um, it is what it is. So we'll float this down in a moment. We've got the second gas. Let's get the factory ready. Because we've already got everything else here. Keep building marines. And um, we could probably go kill my opponent. But we're just going to wait. Wait for the normal timing. Why? Because we know that that is strong. Drop a mule and then float down. We can float that down. Factory is on a hotkey. These guys are going back there. Still no expansion from my opponent. So we know this is some high level stuff. So we just put this guy behind to see when our opponent goes for it. If you want, we could build a bunker. Um, we'll build an engineering bay just in case. Because, well, it's actually part of the build for the engineering bay anyway, to be honest. But uh, if your opponent's still on one base, you know. So it's a Stargate and a Twilight Council. So opponent's trying to go Void Rays and Charge Zealots, probably. But also with a Forge. So it's it's Oracles and Charge Zealots, sorry. It's weird, because my previous opponents I've been so impressed by. And this one, I think, probably just kills people with the Cannon Rush or gets them way off kilt. Because this makes very little sense. It's Void Rays and Dark Templar. Level up your thinking, chat says. Um, What's going on? Uh, level up, yep. force turrets, ah, and then do that. All right, let's get let's get a turret go, go, go. in each mineral line. We can put some marines if we want for now, but let's just do the turret straight away. Is the easier way to deal with this. And uh, as these upgrades kick in and we get two medevacs out, we are gonna have a very easy win here, guys. So um, that might all sound like really advanced. What are we doing though? Complete. I was just like, well, this guy's still on one base, so I'll scan and see what's up, and and react to that, but. Even if I didn't react to it, we'd be totally fine as long as we're hitting the macro. So keep in mind, the, the, the trap you can fall into here is you're not going to be able to process this information as fast as me. So just keep it simple. Them one base? Hmm. Okay. Me build bunker, me build a turret in each base while still, but in between, doing everything else that you're normally doing, right? Don't change your basics. Destro! Thank you for the five gifted subs, mate. This guy's gonna try to come in and be annoying. He's gonna find a whole lot of nada. Not gonna find anything there. Okay, we can get that third command center. Research complete. We got the two medevacs? We do! Alright, let's go win the game. So we're just gonna A move across to the staging point over here. And while we're moving across, what are we doing, guys? SCVs, mules, marines, medevacs. Just waiting for 100 minerals to kill up that second one. See, looking at that. Research complete. Depots. Ready. And yeah, go, we can go, go. take two gases. Gameway. Coming through. And what are we going to do, guys? More SCVs? More Marines? Our Just make sure all of our money is spent. Attack. And then what we're going to do is, this is a really hard move. Remember this one. I know orders. this is really tricky. We're going to move into the open, so we're not going around Ready the corner. And we're going to go stim, A move. Whoa! Ready How do we do that? Um, we can drop a scan, just give us high ground vision. Open that pylon up, just to let us through. And our opponent's trying to build one of everything, which is not going to work out. So I think this opponent was maybe a little bit lower on the MMR, just because the way they play it doesn't really add up. Get the engineering bay and armory transition. So we're gonna Upgrade send marines around the edge. We already knew we were playing a cheeky player, so we should have done that earlier, remember? Okay. Um, macro. So rally to the third. We've got the upgrades coming in. Ready for dust off. So Gazelle just did us. There we go. Gameway coming through. You gonna stay in this game, buddy? Cool. One of everything on one base, so that just made no sense. Now, did they cancel their forge, or was their build just nonsense to begin with? 
They went double gas before anything else. Oh, this is a true Florencio build. And they're chrono boosting while not building probes. This made no sense. I think maybe they know who I am. So this is a fake cannon rush they're trying to do to force an overreaction by the looks of it. Or maybe they were trying to build gateways in the base. Maybe that's what they were going to do. But I just killed the probe. And it's funny how taking the gas kind of bugged out my SCV, so they stopped attacking him for a second there. Which is very well done. But uh, there's just no probes building. That was all of 14, 15 workers. And then they start their gateway. This is a disaster of a build order. There's no reason you would ever take gas before anything else. Both gases. One gas, maybe. Both gases not make sense. So, uh, it's their placement match. So, maybe. Um, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> that one was confusing. Um, yeah. That was, I think, someone who doesn't hasn't actually played the game much at all. Um because the previous players, I was like, these guys are really good. Because I've been playing some Platinum players, right? And, and I was like, oh, they're actually... You can kind of see everything that's going on. Um, so I was I was really surprised in that one. Because I was like, what is going on in this game? But I think that person, not bad at all. Um, they just haven't played the game much. So I was like, oh, they're rushing me. So clearly, usually if someone's building pylons in your base, you're expecting a clear plan. But I think that person was kind of making it up as they went. Which is it's what a lot of people do. Um, maybe they're just trying to peacefully live a pacifist life. You decided to be a jerk? Yeah, that's like every game ever. Oh, shit! It's from a winter... Is that Winter Co? Is that Winter's clan? Go ahead. Oh, you're talking about Ruskar, Lozier, the... Um... The, uh, the Turkish kid. Um, yeah, no, he got the treatment. Apparently it all went well. I haven't actually uh, chased up on it recently, but it all went well and he was, um, yeah, it was, it was a much needed thing. Obviously, I don't know all the details of it, but if you, if you check out, I don't know if you followed the Insta page and stuff from back then, um, but they, they were posting updates and I think they're still posting updates there and stuff, so... Yeah, it was just kind of crazy that so much support came in for that. <clears throat> Wind, it's just yeah that's what i thought or isn't it wntr winter what is this winter co hi good luck have fun is your clan winter's clan let's see if he lies so apparently this is not winter's clan guys do we think this guy's gonna lie i think he's gonna lie good luck have fun and yes yes it is is he lying Maybe, actually, it could be that they have a second tag, because, like, with Pig, with Taste the Bacon, um, we have to have a Pig 2 tag, because you can only fit 100 in each. So if you, whenever we go over 100 players in the clan, we have to put some on a second clan tag. So I, maybe that's the case there as well. We go Reactor. Winterco might be for actually good players. You're in Pig 2, says Kibrit. Yeah, so may maybe it's, like, Pig 2. Kurt says, like, I think it is actually the extent. Okay, they're not lying. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, guys, so their barracks is in their base. Remember, the two things we check for. Number one, is your barracks in your base? And then, are you going to take an expansion? These are the two things. Command center upgrade complete. Uh, where's my depot? Oops. Take my depot. Okay, you go there after building that depot. Add on. Oh no! He walled me in! Taste my drill. He walled me in, bro. Now, because there's only one gas, I think he probably expanded, but we don't know! So should we try and sneak another SCV out? I think we will. But if that Reaper comes straight across, he might kill us, so... Gotta be a little careful. Um, let's go double barracks. I'll see if we can just go straight across the map. Because his Reaper might be like jumping into my base or something. Okay, so we just try to go in, mine minerals, hide behind. Don't know if that'll work or not. Control click the barracks, add to the control group, build two more more greens, build the gas, build another SCV. And what do we do here, guys? Orbital. And remember, these two guys are gonna go back on minerals. So he's expanded! I knew it! Quick, go back home. Go back and mine. Mine the way you went to. So anyway, we can put two guys on gas and we can rally down there. Keep building marines. 
and we can continue our normal build. So we know it's an expand versus an expand. We assumed it was an expand because there was no gas. This is advanced knowledge. Command center but upgrade complete. whether we knew that or not, if we lose our SCV, we send another one, try and scout. And we could have been a bit sneakier. Like I said, if we ran into a Reaper down here, we would have pulled it back, cleared it with the Marines, and then sent it out. Maybe even sent it along the edge of the map if we felt we have to. So Factory is going to go there, and uh, Roos can go over there, build a depot. Um, I think Gary will build a depot over here. We want these like kind of spotting drops on the edges, that sort of thing, right? Okay. Oh, take that, Mr. Reaper. I wouldn't kill the bot because it's shit. Terrans are dirty. They don't like their base being clean. Mom, stop cleaning my room. Mom. And guys, please do me a favor and help answer any newbie questions in chat like that keep popping up. Um, I don't know if we have a command for BDGM toss. We might. So anyways, we're going to get that starport going when that's done. Get the reactor in the starport. That's always one piece. And then you add it them both to the same control group if you do it my way. Kill some SCVs. Build some Marines. Oh, we're so broke. We're so broke. I'm like tapping that mineral key. I'm like, let me, let me build Marines game. Uh, we're a little undersaturated in the main, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him to just go there. Um, we're actually way ahead on supply, but just to keep the habit, we'll keep keep building depots. All right, guys, we're gonna put a uh, few scouts out, just one on each watchtower for now, as well as one out front of the base. Just get some info, you know. Build a few marauders in here as well. You guys will notice they've been a bit more marine heavy, um, especially here against Terran. Whereas against Protoss, I'm like immediately building marauders. But it really just comes down to what you feel. Sometimes people like to just build the Marines because they're cheaper early on, and then build the other units uh, a little bit later. So it's really whatever you like. Now we're gonna build an extra depot so Bruce and Gary united as they should be forever. Building depots forever. Add on, complete. Build a third command center, always queue it back to mining. Select, add to your command center hotkey guys. Always get these good habits. More SCVs, more mules. Build two more. What do we see there? Ready oh, my opponent's doing my build. I think. All right, let's go out and fight. You want to fight, bro? All right, we're just going to hang out here. I don't know where they're coming from exactly. But uh, maybe I'll send a Marine out. Oh, run. And go. Oh. Okay, what do we want to do while that's happening, guys? We keep forgetting 4th and 5th barracks. <gasps> that's Gary and Bruce! How dare you take them off depot duty? Alright, let's pull back, let's pull back. Is there a, is there- a, oh yeah, yeah, my opponent's got more stuff, so let's just put a marine there. Put a marine there. Now notice I just did the dumping thing, but I used the bottom to select them rather than on screen. That's a really good habit. Select the barracks, so we're gonna control click, add them to your control group. Ready for Concussive. Oh, I forgot the engineering bay. Oh, God damn, guys. I keep forgetting my engineering bay. Can you, you guys got to remind me. Apparently, I can't remember a build order. Okay, so because there's a base sticking out, I will try and attack that. We'll see if we can get it. Of course. Oh, that's a liberator, guys. Look at that. Oh, we don't have anything. Okay. So we're going to put all these marines up here to try and deal with that. Okay, and go! So this guy's gonna A move and back at home. Control click the Marines. Research complete. Build some turrets. Oh, oh, he's got tanks. Oh, I wasn't watching. Oh, ow. Oh, oh. So we're just trying to set up here. We're just gonna stim A move there. So we had a nice spready. Notices the units clump up, it's kind of bad. So we're just gonna leave these units here, guys. They're doing a job. They're being annoying. <gasps> Deep breath, what do we do? Transfer Hello. workers. Complete. Orbital. All right, macro cycle, SCVs, mules, marines, tanks, medevacs, depots. That's a full macro cycle. Okay, now we can do the other things. One, one upgrades. It should be two, one, not one, one, but. You know, it is what it is. Um, do we have extra structures? Well, we can take the gases and start the factory transition. Just get that done, right? The earlier you get it done, the better. The earlier you get your macro tasks kind of finished, the, the more uh, APM. It's 
queue up more SCVs, meals, the more um, you can focus Ready on everything else. So we're building medevacs, tanks, bio. Let's put these guys on a control group. These guys have been forgotten as an army. Did we just see something over there? I don't know. Maybe. So these guys are just like a little containment squad being annoying. That's all they're doing. We're just thinking of these guys as our new squad. Now, in ZBT, it's more likely for you to pull those units back, keep them alive. I could do it here as well, but we're just keeping things really simple for ourselves and just saying, ah, those guys were kind of annoying. We can call that a containment, but if we're going to call it a containment, it's a containment that will fucking die, okay? Like, we don't care if this dies. The whole point is that's the decision we've made the moment we leave that there. We're not reinforcing it. Oh, what is this? You going to drop in there? Okay. Ready? So our opponent comes in here. We're gonna stim again because we want to catch those drops. And we're just trying to aim move wherever it goes. I could do a bit more stutter steps, try and catch it. Of course. He runs away. You sneaky little bugger. Complete. So what do we do? Build the fourth base. Through some carry. We've got some marines here. We don't need them now because we built all those turrets. Right? A Liberator demands missile turrets. Liberator is the best unit in the game. Just keep that in mind, guys. So we're going to grab our army. Um, how about we clear up this drop? Let's clear that drop up. And our opponent's stuck on two base. So all we need to do, keep building Marines, tanks, medevacs. Marines, okay. tanks, medevacs. If we can do that, deselect a unit there, then our opponent is pretty screwed. And they've actually built a really good army. But they're lacking upgrades, and we just got 1-1. One, one. So let's start 2-2, two, two, and we're going to look for the game-ending fight. Now remember, we should not be dropping any more mules. Otherwise, we can't really see what's up. Oh, and these guys are still alive. Cool, they can come join our army. Okay. So those guys, just putting them there has put so much kind of like passive pressure on our opponent. So don't get me wrong, guys. The, the power of a contain is real, especially in the lower leagues. But what the problem is, is that people distract themselves by doing it. The reason this was an okay move is because I, I said, oh, when I'm doing this, I am okay for this to just completely fail. Ooh, ooh, I didn't realize if you ever seen that. Oh, jeez. So we kind of, we, we moved in. We tried to keep our bio back. One tank got a few shots off, but the rest didn't. And we should be able to kill that command center. Up there. Looks like, yep. Now, if we want to prepare for a big fight, remember, you got to spread beforehand, guys. So we're going to go these guys here, these guys here. And what we're going to do there is a big stim A move. This is what you do with bio armies. If you outnumber your opponent or you want to just force a fight, you spread them out against tanks. And that's how you engage. Now, this is where you use your F2, which we've unbound, remember. We're not, we're not allowed to use F2. It's where we click that button. If we don't have it all on a, on a hotkey. If preferably, actually, we still got it all on one hotkey, so it's fine. And then you do the famous A move, stim. And there, you'd actually have a great surround, right? Naturally set up. So what would have been an easier way to do that, guys? Are those guys there? Those guys there. That would have been an easier way to do this. Without as many boxes, right? So check it out, guys. So if you do it with less boxes... You just wait for them to get in position, and Mineral then you stem a move. Depleted. And it's still going to be a pretty good surround, right? So that's something you want to look for. And this is the way you use lots of Marines and Marauders. Now, obviously, if we're trying to use our tanks, we instead would have just moved up here, sieged the base. And then as they're focused on that angle, what's another tactic that we can do, right? I mean, obviously, you can do super pro shit like this, where you put all your tanks in the medevac. Super high level micro. And you could like boost in. And you're like, oh, your tanks are sieged over here. Well, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in range of your base. Get wrecked. And you always pull your bio. And you just, you just, you just let your tanks blast, and maybe you even put a medevac there. You're like, haha, get, get wrecked. And he's trying. He's, he's all your opponent's focus is here. And what's the greatest way thing to do in that scenario, guys? Something we keep talking about in TVT. You just. Oh, what did I just do? Whoops. I still have my tanks in the hockey. Whoops. And we just go. LOL! LOL! Well, you just drop them all in the base. So you got me in here, idiot! And why was that a bad idea? Well, not a bad idea, it's a bad execution. What did we forget to do before our doom drop? People, when they do this, I, I've seen so many people and in, in even Diamond League do this, and at the moment they load up the medevac, it's like they're like, I'm committed! I'm like, just fucking drop a scan as you're going in. As you're going in, drop a scan. Oh, there's. there's Four tanks and 20 marines. Okay, no worries. We're no, just going to go back. Yeah. It's fine. That's all. 
just gonna go back. That's all. Unload. We don't need to do that. Actually, if all their army's up there and they're worried... Oh, they've only got four tanks here? Oh, cool. We can just stim. We can just jump on these tanks. Let's go. Wah! And the thing is, there's nothing forcing you. You've already got a position. Whenever you're sieged up like this, your opponent is the one. He's like, I got... I gotta do it, man! I gotta do it! Ah! And they're like, they're freaking out, man. Because they're the one who's like, oh, he's sieging my base. He's denying it. But your opponent is gonna feel forced to break you. A lot of people suck at TVT. Because when they're attacking, they think it's their job to try and push through the tank line. It's not. Just get an angle in range of, in range of something and force them to deal with you. And you'll do really well. How do you drop your unit so fast? If I click the unload button, it does forever. No, it's the exact same. I just said unload, click there. That's all. Now, we don't normally do that. So the problem you're having is what you're doing is you're probably doing this. You're probably going, unload over here. Or something like that, right? But if you just boost and unload on a spot, you should, especially if it's accessible, you'll get there real quick. Now, how often do I use that? Pretty rare. Right? High level players almost never use that. We've got the APM, so if you guys are fast enough or you practice it enough, you'll get there. We will almost always do this one, Understood. where we go drop left click, drop left click, drop left click. Acknowledged. Drop it off. And that's just button click, button click, button click, button click, button click. And that just takes practice. It's the same as like this when you first see awesome. someone play a guitar and you're like, how are you making music with your hands? And it's like, it's just practice, right? It's just muscle memory. It's actually really, really easy once you get the muscle memory down, right? To do it really, really well and perfectly in the right scenario, uh, not so easy. But in terms of what it is, it's just practicing muscle memory, depleted. essentially. It's just syncing it up. There's a little bit of rhythm to it. Yeah. On my way. Pig, when do you build your eBay? Far too late. Far too late! Um, I think a good thing to remind myself is going to be, and this is a habit, if you guys keep forgetting something, what we should do is we should make a little, a little uh, trigger. A little, we should chunk it in with something that we always remember. What do we never forget, guys? The starport. I always remember my starport. So why don't I think, okay, when I build my, when I swap my starboard over, I should also build my engineering bay. Because I've said about 65 supply in the build order, and I think that's right about the time we queue up these medevacs. So it's like build two medevacs, build an engineering bay about the same time, and that syncs up really well. So we go build the medevacs. Remember, when I build medevacs, I also build my engineering bay, and that's going to help me remember it. To be able to select enemy units, you need to be able to enable it in options. Yeah, we go over the options in the very first session. So if you guys, exclamation mark BDGM, you can you can see that video. We go through what you should select and unselect. Okay. Oh, we've done it! Platinum! Oh, yeah. All right, guys. So we've learned our macro transition, and we saw a bunch of different scenarios that came from that, but we saw that lots of bio, adding lots of tanks in the mid-game, super sick really makes that into a super strong army that scales well um and we are in now plat three so that is fantastic to see because we've got a very good early game army bio 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 and then it's three factory tank and suddenly you get this giant ranged um firepower that makes your army good versus all the way through the mid game right so so that'll be really nice Abyss says, I want to see Thors. So Thors are naturally entwined with a jerk it off game plan, unless they have a specific purpose. Now, in Plat, we are going to be learning mech. So that's going to be in the next chapter of the show, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next chapter of Bronze to GM.